Good evening. Welcome to the Select Board Board of Health meeting this Thursday, um, February 15, 2018, at 7.05 p.m. here in the municipal offices uh, at A. Conway Street. We are on uh, being taped, just for everyone's knowledge. Um, I would like to just take a minute to say something about the horrible events in mm. Florida. Um, our hearts go out to the people down there. I Thank did you. ask uh, our police chief to come in today uh, to say a few words, but he's um, had a 7 o'clock meeting at the South Deerfield Fire Department. He's on the Prudential Committee there, so he was unable to come in. But I did have an ex uh, extensive conversation with him, and um, we, are, we are very fortunate um, to have an involved and proactive school community mm -hmm. um, and here in South County. And we have a resource officer, Brian Ravis, who is really wonderful and who has um, been doing um, really a lot of work to build relationships within the school community and, and with our kids. So um, we're not able to discuss security plans or our response um, in an event. But I'd like to say that um, our school community is taking these recent events very serious mm -hmm. and is working with our police department to keep our kids safe. Um, after every event, there is leakage, and that is all the stuff that comes out on social media and what people had in conversations and stuff like that. And we've had events here. And again, we're very fortunate that Brian and our whole police department and the school committee really do monitor and try to be as proactive as possible to mitigate any of this leakage um, as it happens and um, try to inter have intervention. And we just like to encourage anyone that hears or sees anything um, to, to reach out to our police department or Brian. Um, and it's fully confidential, and we just want to keep our kids safe, and, and I think that's what we need to do. To add to that, um, I'm on the school committee, so I, I, uh, Lynn Carey sent out an email, um, uh, Superintendent Lynn Carey sent out an email discussing this and also uh, passed along information because uh, Trooper Carmile, who's in charge of school safety for the region, um, also sent out a, a lengthy email uh, talking about, you know, ways that they're always proactively looking at how to how to protect our kids. Um, it can truly happen in any neighborhood. That town, I think, was just voted the most safe city in Florida, like days before this. Um, so it's just heartbreaking. And uh, we, you know, the, I urge the nation to, um, and our listeners, to just vote for the people that you think will take steps to um, do what you think is right to solve this issue, um, however you feel on the subject. But we can't, we can't have inaction anymore. People need to step up and make a change and, and have their voices heard, so. Wendy? I just want to thank you for addressing this. My cousin Diane is a teacher at that school, mm. has been there for many, many years. She's safe, but I reflected on it and I, you know, I was able to communicate with her and realize that we do a lot of proactive things and it was good for you to talk about that, including it's horrible, but they do active shooter drills, mm -hmm. and we do it here, and they were well planned and well trained down in that school in Parkland. So um, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have to do this kind of yeah. proactive work. But thank you for speaking to us. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, the Pledge of Allegiance? we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Um, we're going to skip down. I'm, I'm assuming you are all here for public comment. Okay. Um, we're going to just do Barbara because Barbara has just a couple minute short thing and she's had a wicked long day. So, Barbara, <laughs> come on up. Well, that's the tool. <laughs> yeah, right. I know, Wendy. Wendy, you have to stay. <laughs> Thank you. Too bad, Wendy. <laughs> so you should have two handouts? Yes. Okay. Um, the policy and the declaration of trust. Okay. It's in your folder. Yep. And I also Hi. 
Go ahead, Barbara. Um, sure. Uh, in 2000, I think it was 15, at the annual town meeting, we voted to establish the OPEB Trust um, by accepting the appropriate Mass General Law. Um, and in addition to that, um, a couple other components to establishing and, and having a functioning OPEB Trust would be to accept a declaration of trust which is kind of outlines the, um, the way that the trust will be managed, who's going to manage it, um, kind of the logistics. Yep. Um, and then the other thing you're all talking about, I believe, is the funding policy. So this Correct. is kind of like your um, financial plan um, to address this OPEB. We call it OPEB. It's post-employee, other post-employee benefits. So we're talking about um, really retiree health insurance funding retiree health insurance. So um, we are uh, required to do an actuarial study um, every two years. It used to be three years, now it's two years. Um, and, they, and they define um, through you know, excruciating detail of numbers and, and sure. none of which I, I plan to explain to you, but um, what our um, ultimate liability is. And so, you know, it, is that number correct or not correct? But undoubtedly, there is a liability. So these these are steps that we're trying to take to address the liability and to fulfill um, what um, the auditors and and such are looking for to show that we are doing something. So we're financially sound, and we have a plan in place. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, the gas B forty five has changed to seventy four and seventy five, and mm -hmm. what's happening is those little notations in the back of our financials are now moving front and center. And not to say that you know banks couldn't see it back there, but I, I guess it's just you know um, coming to light more. And so um, you know, for example, if I were to go out to bond. Um, to, to, you, you want to be as attractive as possible. So I'm just making the recommendation that we do a couple of little things that get us kind of in line so that if we, you know, need to borrow or in addition to addressing the liability, but, right. you know, just to kind of put us in the most favorable light, if you will. <laughs> Have right. you spoken to any of the people that we borrow money from to see how this affects us now or in the near future? Well, um, when we borrow money, it's a bid situation. Mm -hmm. So it's impossible to, you know, kind of say like, oh, I'm going to buy a car in five years. How much do you think <laughs> I can borrow? What will the rate be? Um, it depends. So you just try and be the most attractive that you can be. Sometimes uh, a bond will get a lot of bids because of the duration or the amount or the, right. you know. So, sure. um, again, these are just um, kind of um, good practices to, to try and keep us in the, in the best light. Um, Barbara, my only question is, yes. is this the post and, um, declaration of trust, mm -hmm. this meets all the requirements of the GAPS B-75? Not, I'm not worried about the 74 because we're moving over to the 75. Right. So right. I just want to make sure yep. we're 100% compliant with 75. Correct. Okay. Correct. So we, um, we actually accepted the OPEB um, trust before the municipal mm -hmm. modernization, right. um, which that muni mod they call it um kind of simplified everything it, with this as an exception um it you know <laughs> it outlined a, a a bunch of trustee and, and they had to be certain members and it whatever so we accepted it prior to that so we really don't need to we can we can um accept the trust the declaration of trust as it is i would be the custodian as i am for the other trust accounts that we have okay. um the opeb accounts can be um invested um, by the prudent um, man's um, method. In other words, what, a, what, a, what someone would reasonably think is the right thing to do. Um, whereas all the other trusts are under a legal list. Um, they have it set up a little different, just the longevity in mind, I, I guess. Or, um, not that I would expect to treat this any differently than any other trust. Um, and, the other trust and then the other know. question I had, mm -hmm. one of, I mean, I'm not against your calculation. I mean, it's, this is a fine it's recommendation. It's not my calculation. <laughs> or whatever, the equal to 4%. I didn't suggest that. Okay. That, um, I just uh, gave the template, and I, I okay. think the Finance Committee um, had. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I, I mean, one of the suggestions that um, uh, Trevor and I, when we attended the workshop, was 2% yeah. um, of free cash. If, and then, because people are worried that 
you know, you're making commit because the money just is sitting there. Mm -hmm. So on a year that you don't have very much money, mm -hmm. you're still ha you're having to pay this and let it just sit there, and you might be laying off teachers or laying off police or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I'm I I don't know. You know the four percent. If if I'm not sure, do we need to that vote this tonight? Because I well, I, I just um, want to think about it. I'm not sure where they came up with that. I was in part of the four percent. The finance committee um, came. I think it was the finance committee oh. came up with the four percent. Came up last night. I, I did. Oh, were you okay with this, Jeff? Unfortunately, did. I was not here last night. <laughs> oh, okay. What I did. <laughs> and of what course, I did add, came up. Carolyn, is at the end of that, I said, but not less than twenty-five thousand. So I just thought. Um, right. Well, um, I, I just want to chart our, what are what four percent. Yeah. What was four percent of that? Um, I, I believe we for nineteen it would be like thirty-seven thousand. Well, we pay around nine hundred thousand for the health insurance total now. Yeah. 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 So I just. Um, so I well. Mm -hmm. Can can we wait on this part for a week till next week so we can talk sure. about it? Sure. Thirty-six thousand. I, I just want to say I agree. I recommend this as well. That the, we talked you about recommend it. You the four percent. Yeah, versus and Kip was at the meeting cash. last night, and then Trevor was there later. I'm, I'm not sure if this was discussed. I missed. I missed the OPEP no. part. Okay. I, this was actually proposed um, by a member of the finance committee, and we mm -hmm. talked about it. And we thought. So were you okay well, there, with this, Kip? Well, there were some other items, um, discussion points. One is that what you were speaking about earlier. If you commit to pay a larger amount, mm -hmm. and then we get into a tough year. Right. You can take some of this money and use and it toward only toward right. the mm -hmm. retirees' benefit package. Of, of the current use. year. Current. Right. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so yeah. okay. So oh, right. if, if, if you build that up, then you can Then you draw could dip it down into it if you had a hard year. But it's only for that one use. Well, that was right. why I wanted to I do. I was interested uh, in, like, a percentage of our free cash, because if we had a hard year, you could not well, I, that's, have to do it. I, I mean, if you didn't have free cash in one year or something. So... But this year's free cash, we have a, a lot of more free cash, and it's still around 32, and this is 37. So I, I don't, I mean, I'm okay what, one way or the other. Barbara, what, what are your um, thoughts on the 4%? I mean, I, I, just um, curious what your opinion might well, be of, when of I the health. I initially saw the financial um, policy, the funding policy, it had that 4%. Um, and they had figured it out for 19. I think it was 37,800 yeah. or something like that. Um, but they also had a little note in there that they could at any point reduce the amount. And I felt like for a policy, that seemed kind of loose. Wishy-washy. <laughs> right. So, um, and I wanted it to be kind of something that or at something, least you know. 25. So I added the but not less than 25,000. Um, gotcha. Just, just kind of, you know, we're shooting for the 4%. Right, if we have a hard um, if year. If for some reason, um, yep. you know, we, we just can't do it, then, you know, 25. And, and again, this is a funding policy. I right. mean, we can create a new policy if we're just not able to live within this. But right. at least get it going, see how you it know, is. You know, you're right. We can I actually agree. amend it. So yeah. I thought we would just have kind of a nice, strong policy. This is really yes. what we want to do. And if we find after a couple of years or whatever, we can do more or less. Or, right, you know, right. At least give it a shot and get it going. I agree. To do this. I agree with that. I okay. think that they did. But uh, let me ask you while you're here. Yeah. We currently pay around $150,000 a year for this obligation now. For, the reti for our for retirees. Yeah. We're also um, partially responsible for, like, Frontier. Um, oh, we are. Yeah. Well, we're, what do we, what's our assessment to Frontier? Okay. So that's 50%. another. Okay. So they count even, you know, they count that in our liability. Is there a, because I've never learned this, is there a, a percentage of your liability that whomever expects us to have in a savings. I mean, because no. it, what we've been doing, from what I gather, is we've been funding this year to year as yes. it goes. Correct. Yes. And it, it correct. continues to grow. So I'm going to assume that the powers to be are saying, all right, at some point your community might not be able to provide correct. this. So that's why you need to have mm -hmm. this savings. But at some point, you know, if you keep putting this money away, I can foresee having millions of dollars in there, mm. and every year you're generating through revenues of property tax to pay this obligation. So well, I think the I goal is, is until it. it's fully amend. funded. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And that once it's fully funded, you stop. It's not a continuation <clears throat> forever. So until well, it's the, the fully funded, it, that, mm -hmm. that number can really vary a lot because, you know, where do you, you if you were to say, all right, you're going to cut off today, but yet you have 
retirees are going to be collecting for 20 years, you can have this number. But every year, you could have more retirees or fewer retirees, but you're basically going to have an income to pay for this and, every year. Yeah, and the whole idea is to kind of get those highs and lows and level it out. So one year, you're not whacked with a giant, sure. you know, because you have a bunch of people retire. And, you know, so it's, it's yeah. just kind of cutting off the tips of that huge graph that goes up and I down. I think at the rate that we're talking here, we're not going to be overfunded anytime soon. So yep. may, I, I kind of yeah. see this. We didn't even address long range um, financial goals with this. We just, right. I, I just thought maybe let's just do this for five to 10 years mm -hmm. and, and, and see if we're totally comfortable no, with and it. You and you know what? Then we can amend the policy and that's, uh, and really, yeah. it, right. I mean, it's a good first step. It, so it it's is. really just kind of a very so. okay. skeleton um, policy and just so to get you, us going. So you need this as part of our vote to put this in, um, mm -hmm. to forward this to the auditors. I think it would right. be great because okay. we're going to have our actuary done in this summer. So Perfect. to have all this in place, I think would be okay. beneficial. Um, do you want me to make a motion? Yeah, so I make a motion to accept the Deerfield other post-employment uh, funding policy statement as listed at 4% um, of uh, the prior fiscal year's total health insurance costs for town employees, active and retired, but at no time will be less than 25000 the, down, uh, the town of Deerfield will amend the policy as needed to meet these funding goals. I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? Can no. I just say something? Yes. I think after employment, need to put, I need to put in benefits there. Yes, uh, uh, right. Thank you. It felt like I was employee. missing a yeah. word. Oh, I will, I'll make that change. Thank you. Okay. Um, get it in if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, do you want to make a one on the trust? Sure. Um, <laughs> so I make a motion um, that the town accept um, and vote for the, the town of Deerfield other post-employment benefits declaration of trust as laid out in this document. I'll second the motion. And I actually have a document to sign and Barbara yep. signs it as well. Um, mm -hmm. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, thank you, Barbara, for sure. coming in. We'll thank you so much. So you okay, this no away. problem. I feel like we've thank accomplished you. that. Um, you yeah, something? actually, I'm, I'm, I'm really it. relieved about that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well. Are we going to sign one or just yeah. Okay. Um, Did you I need think anything else? We only one. need, you just okay. needed one, so. right? Okay. Wendy, you just needed one <laughs> yes. signed? <laughs> we'll ask Barbara. Barbara, do, do we want more than one signed? Do one trust with original signatures document? Can't hurt. So. Yeah, I don't, okay. I don't either. I think we file that away and yeah. make copies. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. You can sign it right now if you'd like. It would, it would be the icing on your cupcake. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> we'll have it for you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Here we go. Great. Um, okay. Um, Rini, we'll um, honor your request to um, go jump down to public comment. So do you, do you all want to come up or... You just need to introduce yourself, Steve, and, and um, say why you're here. My name is Steve Anderson. I live on River Road. And um, I have a question first and then some comments. There was, uh, in looking at the video of last week's select board meeting, there was some discussion around a proposal or an idea of, of uh, changing the way we vote at town meeting to use uh, handheld uh, electronic clickers to, and so, uh, but it wasn't clear from what I could make out from the discussion. Uh, is that something that uh, the select board intends to put before the town uh, town meeting for a vote, or what? What's the, what exactly? Well, actually, I think there there has to, we have to change our bylaws, um, right, Wendy? You did research on that. Well, we talked to council about you. Have, having to be in the office mm -hmm. and she said we would have to change a bylaw but that can be done at town meeting. Yeah. Okay. Would, I'm sorry. We would have to change the bylaw? Yes, we yeah. have to make a, a bylaw <laughs> amendment and that could be done at town meeting. Is the intention to then bring uh, uh, an amendment of the bylaws in order to enable this at this town meeting? I would hope so, but... Well, I, I, Tre Trevor and I were not... Um, I mean, I was, I will just say my personal opinion. Um, I, I was really distressed, actually, that people felt that they couldn't vote at town meeting or felt intimidated. And um, 
you know, I'm, I'm going to take Kip's stance and t buying these um, clickers, you know, you'd have to, I mean, some town meetings are controversial, so you have to buy a few hundred. You can't buy just a couple hundred. So, um, you know, we have 3,200 registered voters in town or over 3,200. So even if you only bought a thousand, um, that's a lot of money. And, and then um, you have yearly maintenance and storage and all, you know, for one day, uh, one day a year, you know, and it doesn't really solve, in my mind, why it was so distressing, the conversation, if it's really true, that people feel intimidated. I mean, I, I feel that's a civility issue, and it, it's very disturbing to me that people don't feel they could stand up and, you know, say their opinion. We, we don't all agree, but I mean, I hope we're all, everyone feels that this is our community. We love our community and we're participating and, and you know, that we're going to get along. We don't, we don't have to agree, but we, we should be able to have a, a discussion. So I, I, think I actually that we was. We can have a discussion. This doesn't eliminate the discussion. All it does is, you know, immunize someone from being stared at or booed or hissed. And, and, and I've seen it. I've been. And I, I'm not a bashful person, but I've been the victim of the same thing many times. Um, you know, if I don't agree with something, I vote against it, and people go, oh, my God, well, I would, you know, it's, we all have the, our right to our opinion, but some people do feel intimidated. And it's quite evident that you'll have a 1,000 people come into this building to vote for selectmen or whatever, and yet only 110 people show up at the town meeting. And many of them, my friends, and I say, why don't you go? So I, you know, well, why don't <clears throat> I, my view on this is that we should, um, in cooperation with looking at this one option of getting more participation at town meeting, we should also look at other ways. And maybe if we could um, convene some discussion and have several people who are, you know, pro doing this, and other people have other ideas, and poll the community and. Um, take some time to study the issue and figure out ways. I agree, Kip, there's not enough people coming to town meeting. I don't know if that's the reason or if it's child care or if it's, you know, they've got other stuff to do. They've got kids, they've got soccer, you know, sports are starting up then. People have games. Um, I know last time the town meeting, the parking lot was full because there was a bunch of sports going on. So if we could figure out ways to discuss that and, and, and maybe we learn that these are, are beneficial, but but maybe we learn there's other ways, more economic ways to, to well, get Let, let get me ask you, what, what do you feel about it? Uh, I have a couple, well, I have some sort of practical questions about it and then something that's sort of, I guess maybe, I don't know how to characterize it, more personal, sort of along the lines of what Trevor just said. In terms of practical uh, issues, I mean, potentially uh, having this clicker system would result in more accurate counting in the votes but um, I would wonder, can I really be sure that the device that I'm holding in my hand is actually sending the signal to have that vote counted? It could have a bad battery. It could have faulty wiring. How do I actually know that my vote is registering with well, um, through that? That's what part I'm of saw. that. And, just and to I, let you know, I, I, don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but just so I can answer as we go. I looked at some videotapes of the town of Uxbridge that did that. And let's just say that there was 100 people in the audience. You know, they have a couple of test things. Everybody hit yes, and then 100 shows up. Everybody hit no, 100 shows up in that column. So then they say, you know, now you people, how many, you know, just if you like apple pie, yes or no. And then you add the two numbers together, and they come to 100. So you can verify every vote that this is how it is. Now, there are sometimes people might not vote. They might abstain. So, you know, there's a button for that as well. Somebody might not even click the, the, the button at all. You know, it, there's a lot of variables, but. Right, so the, clearly there's ways you can um, yeah. um, try and test it to make sure it's working properly. Sure. But at any given time, uh, who's to say that it's not just as likely that, well, I know that when I raise my hand, I've sent the signal, but whether yeah. some, the person who's counting my vote actually counted my hand, I can't be 100% sure right. of that either. Right. Right. True. Um, anyway, so there's one. Um, I don't know how it works in Uxbridge, but uh, it's, you know clearly um, votes can be counted more quickly electronically. But maybe I don't know. Are we going to be standing in line to receive them when we come into the meeting, as they have to write down the number of the one that I have in my hand, so they know that I've given it back? 
So no, it would be I, a time I, delay. The way I saw it done is that as you come in to register and you give your name, they hand you the clicker. And they, yeah, but you have to account that that number goes with that person so they can go get it back. Anyway, so there could be yeah. you know, some time lost or congestion in trying to get into the meeting, and I don't know about turning them in, chuck them into a box, or whether you have to actually sign them back in. Um, a third sort of practical question is um, uh, that it might increase participation, that just people aren't even coming to town meeting because they're worried about what people might, um, that might judge them on how they voted. <clears throat> But um, so I'm wondering if the towns that have adopted this system, have they been doing it long enough to see whether it actually changes the number of people who, who comes, to, uh, comes to the town meeting? So I think that would be interesting information to question. find out. Actually, that's a good question. Um, uh, and the fourth one, I don't know, do the uh, elected officials also have a clicker or do we get to see how they vote? <laughs> we, we would have clickers uh, as we well. We clicker too. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, but as, I have as no a voter, I would want to know how my elected officials are voting. I uh, don't want them true. to be yeah. anonymous. That's true. Um, Makes sense. Actually, I didn't think of that either. I didn't but think of that, but. you have to either raise or not raise your hand. Basically. I think a lot of these. I mean, just to jump in real quick, I think a lot of these, and I could be wrong, but a lot of them are used at a representative town meeting. So I think a, you know somebody from a district has the clicker and um, it's a more controlled environment versus an open but maybe I'm wrong are they well, open the, end if if you, know, you can write this down but if you go to uxbridge yeah. you can go on there and watch their last annual town meeting which was in October it, and, you, and it starts right from the beginning the, the yeah. town clerk explains to the people real briefly how it, the system works and then you can sit and watch their town meeting and see how it worked is are they representative or are no, they open? No, just like it's an town. open. Yeah, okay, I think there were that's what I was curious. Whether they were people in their audience. And yeah. Okay. Um, and the last one, which is the the uh, on the more per sort of personal side, uh, basically I'm echoing what Trevor said: is that rather than um, immediately, you know, if, obviously everyone should feel safe and, and, mm. and free from intimidation at, at any uh, public meeting like this. Uh, but rather than turn immediately to an expensive uh, technical fix, um, maybe we should be putting energy into examining other pathways, other ways of making sure that the tone of our town of Deerfield is, is one that ensures well, that everyone feels safe. Like, and like I said, that was what was so, to, so distressing to me is that it's not really um, reaching the underlying problem that people don't feel comfortable you know, voicing their opinion. I, th I think that's terrible. I mean, I mean, we do need to be more civil. There's no question, mm -hmm. so. Um. So that was it for my comments, thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank Steve, you. thank you. Hello, Julie Cavaco. Um, so I do a lot of events. I'm doing one at the library every Saturday at 3 o'clock <laughs> for the entire year of 2018. <laughs> Drop a hint. Um, I, I'm even leaning. I'm even. Le okay. I do a program every Saturday at the library at 3 o'clock. It's called Find Yourself at Tilton. And one of the ways is to, you know, get people to know that we're open in the afternoon, but also is to build community. So the first week I had it, it was, you know, make bookmarks. I think two people came. Okay. One week, we nabbed some kids that came in, and they did it. <laughs> um, we had card making. We had five people. So as you see an increase, you start planning for more people. So I'm thinking, OK, well, I'm going to have maybe seven people at the cracker making this past Saturday. I had 16. Wow, wow that's great. So, Luckily, I do a lot of events, and I could scramble, on, and everyone had a good time. But we're doing bread making this Saturday at 3 o'clock. <laughs> Plug. And I now need to look at the fact that I had 16, and I need to plan for more. Hmm. I hope my programs grow. I hope they increase in size. So when I look at the 500-seat hall that we go to when we go to the um, town meeting, it might even be more because isn't it for a school-wide? I assume that our 4,100 
over 18 voters someday could want to go and take part in it. Now, even if we think of capacity and we get capacity as five or 600 and get clickers for all of that, the expense is just going to be huge. The storage, the running is going to be outdated. Um, so those are my concerns is all of that. And I do think that a good point is, I think Steve referred to it as more looking at it. And we've got um, a long list of committees on our website. And I think that it's not a bad idea to consider if we really want to go that route of having a committee and looking at um, how, we, how we handle our town meetings or mm -hmm. how um, the culture is. Um, because I like to think that every time we have a town meeting, we're going to have more people than we did the last time. I would never plan on having less. Mm. And um, if we have a hot topic, like when we were building the school, mm -hmm. or it's, true, it's amazing have. sometimes how many people walk out of a town meeting when we've had a big discussion over a $1,000 line item. And people come out for that $1,000 line item. Forget the big item. So we never know what's going to pull people to our town meeting. And I think that 200 is way too less. And I do agree with the idea that, you know, a committee, we've got a sewer committee meeting. We've got, you know, the uh, uh, energy. We've got committees all over the place. I think it, this would be a really um, good thing to do, think about having um, a review of it mm -hmm. and not rush into it, um, especially, in, you know, with so little out there. So, well, See, it's Saturday, I had, three actually, I had thought about it quite a bit um, because I was kind of distressed, like I said, really distressed about it. And I did some research, and if we have someone come to do a meeting, um, it would be just as expensive as buying the clickers. And then um, we'd have this meeting, and so all of us who are distressed about this kind of discussion would come and say, oh my gosh, we had a wonderful meeting, but we're not re really figuring out how to reach the people that Kip is referring to that maybe feel intimidated. And that makes me feel sad. And then we don't have follow-up. You know, follow-up is like the maintenance on these, you know, pieces of clickers or whatever. Right. You know, there is a cost to a follow-up. So I'm, I'm not... I mean, maybe having a committee or just saying, let's do some homework on this and think about it. How, how do we increase participation at the town meeting? And then how do we address civility? I mean, it, it is a very, it's complex. It's not an easy thing, but how do you reach out to the people that are the ones that are afraid maybe to, to have their opinion said? And how do we, and how do we monitor the, you know, somebody that might have a, a negative comment to somebody about how they voted. So, number one, we have to involve um, our mo moderator. We have, you know, Dan Graves is wonderful to be mm -hmm. willing to do that. And then maybe we can reach out to Peter James, who's had, who was our moderator for years and years, but also was um, really active in the New England Association because, of course, open meetings, you know, that's, that's New England. That's our right. tradition from, you know, hundreds of years ago. So um, I, I, I hesitate to form a committee like tonight, but I, I think that if we thought about it and we put it on the agenda for next week and um, when we meet again and, and, and you try to generate some ideas and, and think about it and do some research, I, I don't know. Do you have any other discussion? I guess I've made a bigger deal out of this than possible. I mean, even if you buy 5, 500 of these things, it won't cost any more than our mosquito district would. And we're talking about including the whole town. I, I, I just don't get it. So well, there's a lot of things I just don't yeah. get. That makes me feel really good because the mosquito district, you could save someone's life. <laughs> of course you could. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, and I will add, um, you know, in light of um, the most recent shooting down in Florida, oh, the, I, I don't the make important of discourse of it is. It, it's it a, is absolutely. It's a. I mean, if if kids in school aren't feeling comfortable, you know, we need to address that. If people in in well, local restaurants are having conversation where they're feeling uncomfortable, um, we need to address that. So I think that. Um, it's a good direction to go in to talk about the climate and how we treat each other. And I think uh, going through our moderator, moderator is a good idea. 
Well, I think it's just really complicated, and uh, and, yeah. and reaching out and trying to solve the underlying um, problem is more important because buying the clickers doesn't really address it. Right. And and I, I am concerned. I mean, I it upsets me that yeah. that would be how few people feel or view our community. So, um, I. I I would like us to put some effort into it and, okay. and try to come up with some resolutions. Sounds good. Jeff had a question. Oh, yeah. yeah just very quickly, I hope, I hope you don't dismiss the issue. And it sounds like you're time. not. But Please speak into the mics on this Sure, time. I will. <laughs> I think they can hear me. <laughs> no, FCAT always asks me to okay. please ask people. What, to, I, what, to I'm, that what I'm, my point is, is that hopefully this is not dismissed uh, because myself personally, I've had probably 20, 25 people approach me. I have not approached them. They have approached me and have voiced their concerns about the town meeting on the town meeting floor in voting. And uh, several of your small business owners feel very uncomfortable with it. And you have a lot of other people like I say, just recently, probably in the last, I don't know, six months or so, I've had about 25 people approach me and ask if there's some way that they could change this because they felt uncomfortable going to town meeting to vote on some of the issues in that. And I realize for some people, that's a very easy thing to do. They don't care who knows what, doesn't bother them. But other people, they do. It, it has an impact and then other people are, obviously concerned for different reasons let's just leave it like that uh, so and I also think uh, with the town meeting could somebody call for a paper vote paper ballot on some of these controversial controversial issues so you could end up all of a sudden with a town meeting and somebody call for a paper ballot How's that going to affect your town meeting? Do you Who's going to count the votes? Do, do you think, uh, Jeff, those 25 people would get involved with a committee? Or a, a portion of them that I, might, I don't know. might want to talk I, about I that? You know, I can't speak for them. Talk because, about their feelings right, or... Yeah, I, I, I really can't speak for them. I've just, all I know is they've approached me. I have not approached no, them. No, but if... Uh, but, since you have the avenue and I don't, I don't right. know if there's any, I mean, I'm speaking out to the world here, but if, if, if any of them would come and talk to me or um, I, I would just love to learn more and, and, right. um, and, and hear their concerns firsthand like you have, because right. that makes a difference whether, right. well, you know, you when know, you hear it, it firsthand. Some of it is they just don't want their neighbors to know how they're voting on Understood. some of these controversial I com issues. I some completely of, understand. You know, some of your uh, business people, obviously, they're a little concerned. Oh, of you course, because it's their customer base. It's going to affect their business or not. Right. You know, and, and I think you have to take that for you know for mm -hmm. what it's worth. Uh, yep. I think there's some true value there, and okay. I think all of us would like to see. And why well, I say all of us, I think we'd like to see the numbers increase mm -hmm. as far as the annual town meetings. Right. You know, when when you have when you have as referred 4,100 voters and you have a hundred people show up for an annual town meeting yeah you know that's you know we could do we could do better so my my issue here too is that you know if somebody wanted to call a paper ballot on town floor on some of these controversial issues all of a sudden spur of the moment how are you going to handle it we'll have to handle it or what if somebody did that on every question that's what i'm saying let me ask well, my board question. If these things were free, would that affect your opinion on this at all? If there was I absolutely no cost to the town? I, I don't know. Um, I don't, it probably would affect my decision, yeah, but I still, but I, costs well, I still like want to, no, um, I'm saying no, free, if, yeah, free yeah. for, for, until the end of time, that would probably affect my decision, but I think other things might too that I don't, I'm not thinking about, like, you know, just talking with people that feel that way or or guess, other ideas that other people may have I, I, I just I, want to I, I share your concern about the people but with this type of a system the people who are afraid you're protecting them and the people who are willing to speak out it doesn't we'll affect them out. at all right you know so that I don't see the downside to it the only downside that I can see would be the expense to the town mm-hmm and 
and what you might lose in discourse or I, I don't know. I just I just I'm not against it. Yeah. I just want to learn more about it. I, I think, I, that's all. Again, you've got I think you have to look at as would it be cost effective? True. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Are you going to be able to get draw more people in? Right. Are you going to increase people the, involved? Increase those numbers because maybe right, somebody yeah. who comes to a town meeting then gets the idea that maybe they want to run to sit here or mm -hmm. sit on one of the boards we have or I just think we need more participation in all of the town. I, I, well, yeah. I mean, I think everybody needs to participate. And, and if that and if those help, you know, that that might be a great thing. I just I just want to learn more about it is all. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Yes. Julie. I also um, look at potential storage. If he has to come up, you have to come up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the democratic way. <laughs> I would um, also look at potential storage. And oh, I know. I, that's exactly what I first how is it going to get from here to there? And storage of, of the clicker. Um, the storage of the devices. Where in our oh, world they're like credit we... cards. They're... You could put them in a briefcase. I could carry them home. They're, they're pretty okay. small. And the and rest, then, the rest um, of the thing, it's a software program. It goes right, on our laptop. Then I guess yeah. it would also be... Um, who's going to handle it, what staff member is going to have to bring it over, and um, that it ups that burden. Well, on that. I'll volunteer to do that. I mean, I can carry a briefcase to the high school. I, I mean, well, that kind so of policy just, would have no, to be just, set. They're just questions that, yeah. that's yeah. the first thing I thought of. Where would, I work in a library, where do you put There's stuff? more to it also. It's, imagine sitting in the, in the audience at Town Hall. We can have a screen behind us, and the entire article will be right up there. You know, people can read it from a distance. As, as we're reading it, it will be right there. Then when the moderator asks you to vote, you can see the count right there. So if it has to pass by two-thirds, the, the computer will tell you. It'll do the math for you. It's very simple. It also keeps track. It doesn't keep track of who voted for it, but it keeps track of how many people voted for this or that. So it helps the town decide in the future, well, look, at this was extremely popular, or this was not very popular, or, you know, and those types of things, you know, they're not real important, but I mean, it seems that we're like to collect a lot of data on a lot of different things. <laughs> yes, we why do. not, you know, if we're going to collect true. data on mosquitoes, why not collect data on how our residents feel on it, subjects, right. you know? So it's That's definitely, a good point. I mean, yeah. worth continuing the discussion. I agree. So many viewpoints I, that, yeah. I mean, so many aspects we don't know, but I definitely think discussion is needed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just want to make sure that we're actually addressing. The underlying issue, which is that people are truly feeling uncomfortable and, you know, not not safe. But that's that's a very difficult thing to do, Carolyn. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. you can say what you want, but you know, if people are passionate, you know, and they, um, you know, if you truly believe in something, and somebody sitting next to you doesn't think the same way you do, you know, there's a lot of people in our town that express their opinion by glaring, by snaring, or just saying things like, oh, wait till you need the ambulance. You know, it, it, it's human nature. Mm -hmm. And try to say everybody, you gotta take a civility class that, you know, you just have to look straight ahead, and even if the guy next to you doesn't agree with you, just, you know, shake their hand, say have a good evening, and walk out. That doesn't happen. It doesn't. Very, very simple, but... Um, I'm just very confused about this, but if somebody no, is, to the uh, hello, hear me? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, if somebody's concerned about what their neighbors think, just can't they just abstain? Well, what good does that do? Then they're not, they might as well not come at all. Well, they, they might just abstain on one issue. It could be, only be one issue that they're a little fuzzy about, and there are many, many other issues on the agenda. So that's just... You know, it seems like a very expensive thing. I, if there's just 25 people among all the voters, or maybe, maybe if there's 30, to go to the expense to satisfy those people, I, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and I think your idea is very good if you get some of those people to express why they've been in t you know, intimidated. I, I would just love would, to hear. You know, we've know. got to have some kind of background as to what's brought this all out. As opposed I to think just I think that conversation would even make it worse. Why? It would. Yes. Why? All right. Do you want you want some personal experience? Sure. There is somebody in this room that when I was asked a question on a topic, they gave me the finger. Mm -hmm. That's... And and all I did was they asked me a question, I responded, and they gave me the finger. 
I wow. said, thank you, and walked away. So, you know, that's the, that's the type of thing that you run into. And so people are not going to open up, especially if they're timid. They are not going to open up and say, oh, this, that, and anything. And, and what, if, what if someone came to me and said, I don't like the way Carolyn said something to me. Mm -hmm. And I go, Carolyn, you know, why did you speak to this woman? And you can say, oh, I didn't mean to. I mean, you know, whatever. I just felt passionate about this. It doesn't matter. You spoke your mind, and it offended this other person. You know, and all this does is just, it's just a way of you saying what you believe without the world knowing it. Every time we come to town elections, you know, in this building, we got little screens around. Nobody sees next to us how we're voting for who or what. You know, I mean, a third of this town voted for Donald Trump. And there's plenty of people in here that knew that if your neighbor voted for Trump, you go, what an idiot. Why would you jump, vote for him or vice versa? And that's why we have these little curtains. And and all it does is make us all better neighbors. We don't have to judge somebody next to us because they don't think the exact same way we do. I mean, we're all supposed to be inclusive and all think that we're alike and, or we should all get along. Why not let all of us have our neighbors have their own privacy? You know, let them vote with a clear conscience without having to worry about what somebody else is gonna think of them for speaking their true opinion. Thank you. Um, my name, can you hear me? Yep. My name is Ava Gibbs, and I live at 617 River Road. So um, uh, I, I want to say, first of all, that um, Steve's comment about, I, wanna, I want to know how our elected officials vote, and I don't know how to get around that with your system, Kip. And I also want to know that, uh, the answer to that question, did this did this really bring more people to town meetings of the four towns that were not representative, the regular you know, town meetings? I'd like to get some research. So besides those questions, and even besides the money question, which we've gone into plenty, I feel that there's an atmosphere here that um, we have had town meetings, I don't know how long, 300 years? and. People must have disagreed tremendously over those 300 years. I know they disagreed tremendously two years ago, but the pipeline, where I was very involved, and people were very controversial. Well, I personally have not had people say to me that they were, um, that they were shy you know, to uh, voice their opinions or raise their hands to vote, even in very controversial votes in the previous town meeting. So I want to say that that's not been my experience. That's been your experience? That's not been my experience. And we were, uh, I know a lot of people were frightened. They said, no, this is what I believe in, and this is, I'm going to come out with it and say it and vote for it. That's one thing I want to say. And I feel that if we get the system in place, what we're saying is that this town has agreed that we're all, we are fearful of each other, we have intimidated each other, uh, we can't be civil with each other, and we're gonna use a technological fix. That's what, that's what we're really saying to ourselves and to our kids and the school. Um, the narrative here that, um, that we're not, the Deerfield voters are not civil enough, that they're not mature enough, um, that if they know how their neighbors vote on issues, that uh, what? What exactly is the fear that, is, that we're so scared about, that um, if we're open about our vote, that people will have an opinion about a vote? Well, they must have had an opinion for the past 350 years that we've been a town and had town meetings. I don't really know how long that is, by the way. But well, our 350th is, is 2023. So okay, so well, we've had it for There's several been quite hundred a history, years, yes. right? It's been quite a and, history. Um, and, and what? They'll have some kind of retribution? I choose not to live in an atmosphere of fear. How have we made it so far? And we've had very contentious votes, you know? I still think that um, there's an atmosphere, I hesitate to use the word vibes, because I know you'll think I'm an old hippie, but I do think we are, we are creating an atmosphere of, um, we can't trust each other, we don't know how to talk to each other, you know? 
We know that people will disagree about many things, and we disagree about issues, but we do not have to disagree about our common humanity. And of course we disagree about issues, we're human beings. We disagree with our spouses, right? But we still think of them as their common humanity. So the civility stuff is really important. It's, this is aside from the money. You ask them the question, if it wasn't for the money, how would you feel about that? Well, if it wasn't for the money, I would still feel rotten about this. Uh, for those reasons, because it really what we're saying is, oh, let's give in to, to um, we're all worried and fear about each other. And I have not heard that. I would like people to tell me, I am really worried to come to town meeting, and therefore I don't come to town meeting. I've never heard this. Hmm. I talked to four people today. Well, I, it, let them talk to somebody else besides you. Because I really feel, I'd like to hear, let them come to a committee, let them come, let's have a mediation. But I'm not, we've been here for hundreds of years and we've managed to, you know, we've managed to pull together as a town. What I wrote here is that um, we can agree, we can disagree on strategies and tactics, but we can agree on community, on connection, on being authentic, even if, you know, just being authentic ourselves, and supporting each other in times of emergency and great need. And do we need to agree on all strategies to remain united as a community? Another thing that I have, as I think, okay, when people, if they have these devices, I wonder how many people would really listen to the discussions in town meetings. And the discussions in town meetings, where we give our opinions back and forth, not the voting, the discussions, right? For me, and I got some emails when I, today, that they have been a major source of information um, for other people, and they have changed their minds. So I wonder, these are all wondering. I don't have, I can't prove it unless we find out from these towns. Uh, we cannot, we're not gonna be able to prove it. But we are saying, if I'm voting secretly, I'm thinking to myself, I've got my clicker, and I've already come in with an opinion, why would I bother to truly, truly listen to my neighbor's opinions? Actually, that's a really good point. And that is democracy for us to really listen to each other. Yeah. So um, I want to say that I like our town meeting in its present form, where we freely and openly voice our opinions, and we vote freely and openly, and yet we still remain neighbors and a community. I, I, I guess that's how I feel very strongly, that we need, to, we need to sort this out a little bit more so we can really address the underlying stuff. Because what this is is not just a money issue, although the money issue is concerning to me, but it's, it's way deeper than that. It's like really saying, you know what, we, we can't disagree. Then we have a real problem. And I don't think we, I'm, I'm willing to, I am willing to, if you make a committee, I will be on the committee. Because I really, I think that we can always disagree about issues and still, and still, you know, respect each other's humanity. I may not be saying the right words, but I think you all get my drift here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any, anyone else that would like to say anything? Okay. Do you guys have anything else to say about the clickers? Because this is different. No. Okay. Oh, is this about clickers? No. Mine is not, but if you guys are in the middle of this. Well, um, oh, what, Mike, why don't you come up and then uh, we'll, let, let's just address this um, before we get into one more public comment. Um, so it's not related to clickers, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can, why don't, because it is distressing to me, and I, I've said that multiple times. I've done some research. Do you, do you think if we put this on the agenda for next week, you would be willing to come um, to uh, discuss this for a few minutes as to what is a committee the right way to move? I, I, I'm, I was just not, con I was concerned that the, uh, the, the root of the committee might not be a, a solution because you're not not able to reach out to the people that that Jeff has identified and that Kip has identified and 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 we need to include them in the discussion because, like I said, we can't have a meeting and we'll be like, you know, all rah rah and oh this was a really good meeting and and feel really good about it but we haven't changed or addressed anything so 
my, what my problem was when I looked into this is that I wasn't sure how we were going to reach out to um, the people in the community that feel intimidated or feel uncomfortable. And how, how, in what venue would we be able to make them feel comfortable enough to come and then address this whole underlying um, civility issue? And how, how do we move ahead as a community? How do we be effective? And, and, and that kind of thing. So um, could you help me out and help Trevor and even Kip? Kip wants to move this forward. So um, could we put you on the agenda for next week and, and, and have you come? Um, and, and what would I be doing? I'm sorry. Oh, well, well, we need some ideas as if a committee is really going to be okay. the solution to this. I, I mean, we do have to... Dan, Dan Graves, our moderator, he, he runs the town meeting, so we, we need to, to give him a heads up and ask him to participate with us somehow. Or what well, does he want to do? I've spoken to him about this. Oh, okay. And then we, we, you know, maybe we can get Peter James to volunteer because he's had so much experience with uh, the town meeting group. I mean, he's very active because he liked the whole historic part of it and all that. So sure. um, this is not a new issue. But um, I'm not sure, in my mind, I wasn't sure if a committee was really going to be effective, you know, um, use of our time to address this. Well, so it might give you ideas on how you can poll the community to kind of find out the true, you know, the true numbers or the true sentiment of what, what this is going to fix or how many people would really love to do that. But what it, you know, and then we could find out maybe from the other towns, like, did it increase, you know, people, or just did it make? Or them how feel do more we increase participation altogether? Because Other than just the clicker, right? Just, Other I items. mean, that's one of the issues is, you know, people not participating. Not participating. We need to have more people come to town meeting. So how do we, you know, is the clicker the solution? You know, and is visual aids better? You know, yeah. Along with the say, we decide to move ahead with a clicker. Also, visual, you know, graphs of where your money is being spent. Well, one of the things that we saw at the MMA that we thought would be very helpful is a lot of visual aids, so people could understand where we're going. Because you know, about seventy percent of our budget is school related, so you can see w what's happening, and so you put you know, on charts, what's happening. And because a lot of the angst and or maybe where people feel uncomfortable is, you know, a, it is around money because there's less how money. Are we have? So how, how are we going to spend our money more effectively and efficiently? And, and where are we headed? And, and, you know, we need to talk about how we're going to afford things in the next two or three years and five years out. And, and just because we're talking about it doesn't mean we're anti-education or anti you know municipal employees or whatever so the the idea is you know one of the things that Trevor and I were thinking about when we saw the visuals was that maybe the visuals would help people understand why we are so concerned about money and 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 it's the taxpayer, we, the want, local government, is paying more and more of the burden because the state is not helping with our education. It's less. It's it's very almost 20 percent of of the cost of educating our students, and that's like, you know, that's down from like in the 30s in just a few years, and you know that's a serious serious impact on the financial local financial budget. But all a lot of our federal programs, we don't get a lot of federal money, but um, the infrastructure program that the that the president is rolling out trillion That's trillion an and a half. It, it, he's only the federal government's only paying two hundred billion dollars instead of four dollars federal dollars for every local dollar. He's saying there'll be one federal dollar for every local dollar. Well, where in the heck are we getting the money from? You know, so we're not even going to be able to participate. You know that kind of thing. Uh, so it's crazy. I mean, that's, that's the kind of thing that we're facing as, as a local government. So we need more people to participate to figure out what we're going to do because it's, it's a train wreck coming. Um, and those discussions, everybody has different ideas, so those discussions are a bit, are a bit um, they are contentious. But we have to be able to address it 
in a civil manner because we're all in this together. So this, to me, is really important that we understand the under, underlying of, of what's happening here, not, not just the clicker thing. As you said, the technological fix is not really fixing us as a community. And I, you know, we need to stick together. So would that be okay? So come next week. So come is next week. On Thursday? No, 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 it'll be next Wednesday. And we'll put you on the agenda, say, like at 6.15 or something. Do we have any, do you have anything on the agenda right now that's timed? Um, I don't think I have anything scheduled yet. Exactly. So, well, how about like 6.15? What? How about like 6.15 next Wednesday? And anybody else a out there that may and feel anybody the other else, way. Anybody else that, you, that is interested. And, we'll, and, and if you could just do some research as to what our step, next step should be. Or, or have some discussion. Julie, have some discussion at the library. What is our next steps when people, when you see people? I mean, we need to figure out what we're going to do is, what would be effective to, to answer these questions? I'll do my best in a week, but it's, it's a week, okay. Well, or do you want to do it in two weeks? Do you want to do it in two, two weeks? weeks? Two weeks? Better. Two weeks is two, it was better? Okay, um, let me just look at the calendar here. It probably is a good idea. Can I, may, is it okay yes, if I speak? Yes, please, please, um, please. If you really want to embrace this as a community-wide discussion, I do. I think inviting and saying more strongly, perhaps on camera, to the mic, to the community to come, you know, yes. weigh in on this. Please. But as we know, with town meeting, um, and you're speaking to these graphs and all of that. Um, the more informed people are, the better the discussion, and the, the, the better. Well, that's um, why we tried to have information night. Well, we'll talk about that a little yeah. bit later. <laughs> but anyway, can I just say, um, when I first heard this proposal, I think it was almost a year ago, Jeff, that you had suggested this, and I was a bit horrified. I've been doing, doing town government for 35, almost 40 years, going to many towns and town meetings. And despite it being a town meeting being a bit of a hindrance to managing a town and administering a town, like little everybody voting on something that they don't know the real details about, I still hold a sort of, you know, Pollyanna, someone called me, and I am a Pollyanna anyway, but I'm also pragmatic and a realist about things. But I, li I really believe in it. But what happened is I remembered that civil invocation that I put in the, the town meeting booklet because I really believe in that. But I also want to say that since this has been brought up, I've spent a lot of time researching it, and um, my mind has shifted a little bit. Mm -hmm. I do, but I do think, for the reasons you're talking about bringing people back here, the idea of having a committee, because most, many of the communities, if not most the ones that I've read about who've adopted this, have done it through that route, to set up a committee, Right. Probably a committee where people, you I can identify that they represent different viewpoints and Correct. are agno agnostic, haven't made a decision. Right. And they can look at the issues of cost and, and which votes they can take by, by this means. No, n as far as I know, none of these towns are voting everything by clicker. You know, There right. are hand raises or voice votes, that kind of thing. The moderator's role, the town clerk's role. All of that stuff needs a by whatever the bylaw by language change right. might need to be, but I I think it's it's worth so you exploring. Think a community might work. I, I see it has worked in other communities. Okay. I don't I don't know how we can do this that quickly, but I leave that to you decide that. Um, but I did shift. I did shift on this because of what I read about what other communities were doing and thought. Well, that's what I would let the community. Uh, you know, is it, figure that out. And of course, it, it is your community. But anyway. Well, that's the whole sense of where I'm at on this, is mm -hmm. I want education and I want to take some time to think about this and hear people's points of view, understand how we would get the bylaw together, um, what the true cost would be, what, you know, the participation rates of the other towns. Um, I've certainly not, you know, what I like is that I can change my mind <laughs> and uh, based on feedback and data that comes to me and that, that's, you know, that's, that's the whole reason I sit here is to, to do that. So I would um, like more info. Well, you know, it kind of brings to mind of <clears throat> talk about people getting involved. A few years back I read what was called an, an open space plan 
and it was quite a thick book, you know, and there was a lot of information in that. And, you know, I, I read through the whole thing, and it was a long yeah. winter's day. And I got to the end of this open space plan, and there were a lot of people involved, and it said, this is the will of the community. And there were 39 people responded. And that's troubled me ever since, mm -hmm. you know. So, you, you know, committees are good, and they, they have a function, but when you read something like that, I don't know how much we spent on it, how much time it took, and the people that worked on it probably worked very hard on it. But when you have 39 people vote on something, but, or respond to it, and then it's called the will of the people. I the, think you're missing you know, my point. Uh, the committee is not deciding. The committee will go out and research more than 39 people. I mean, I want, it, I want to hear from the whole community, maybe at town meeting, how they feel about this, or not even at town meeting, because that's the problem they're not showing there. Other ways that we can get that feedback to kind of make a decision of, you know, so that we're going to do the right thing, and it will we'll, we'll increase it, but by no oh, means if, what I don't know how many people, people watch us, but, you know, you can go to our website and get any one of our email addresses, and you can email Please us. Please email us. You know. I'd love to hear from all of you. That, you know, at least Didn't we know we there's 25 and another four. Yeah. We're up yeah. to almost 30. So if we could get some more, um, I'm sure there's a lot more people that feel that way or just haven't even thought about this situation. So, um, you know what? How about March 8th, which happens to be a Thursday because Trevor has a school committee meeting on the 7th. So, how about March 8th, and we can, at 6:15? Would that work for everybody? For what? What is this? Um, is this your regular meeting? Or yeah, meeting? we have a regular meeting on, on um, March 8th. I'm still willing to do, you know, boots on the ground and help out, but I just won't be able to make the meeting on the 8th. Okay. Well, um, we could do the 14th because we're meeting the 14th as well. Can all of you meet the 14th? And anybody else that I, I, wants I, I, to come? I work every Wednesday night, so. Oh, okay. Well then, I, Julie, why don't why don't we stick to the Thursday, and you can you just relay your information to, you know, Ava or anybody else, and or Rini or whatever. Because we're going to hear from other people who well, can't make it Wednesday is, or the this Thursday is just either. This the start <laughs> of of what we're going to do, but I, I just I just want us to be effective and 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 to really reach out. And not just the same, you know, group of people. Not that I'm not happy that you came, and I'm th thank you very much. But it's just you obviously aren't the ones that are afraid to stand up at town meeting. So um, we need to we need to find those kind of people, and and talk to them and see what we can do. Will it be the um, Thursday at six or Thursday? Um... It, it's Thursday at six. And that's the. Well, I would. Was it the eighth? Eighth, March eighth at six fifteen. Our meeting starts at six, but we'll we'll put you we'll put this as an agenda item on at six fifteen. Okay. okay. Yes, Rini. Can, can you again encourage the viewers, especially the ones that are having difficulty, to you know coming to town meeting and voting? Why? So that we have something to go. You know, well, I mean, one of the things that I would hope to be addressed is you know. Are we going to increase participation at town meeting? How do we do that? You know. And if they don't feel comfortable yeah, coming to a meeting, right then now. then they could email. Are you all connected to the library? No. No. I was just, I was just curious. I was, I was wondering. Okay. Um. I was wondering. You know, if, if people don't feel comfortable coming, you know, to a to a meeting on the eighth, they could always email us. Um, yeah. Please. Why you know, you ask any that? feedback. Yeah. I was just curious. Just curious. Yeah. My wife and kids. Okay. <laughs> but why would you think I that? Thought, I thought you said earlier that people should be able to ask questions and that and not feel intimidated. Yeah, but it's just, so I just, I just asked exactly. the question. I was just curious. <laughs> this is my point exactly. Yeah. This is a classic example. No, no, no. The man asked a question and you want to know why. I answered his question, kid. And I understand I that, but do you Excuse understand me, I why I asked the question? And I asked him why back. That's right. I am allowed to ask why. It, yes, you are. Just curiosity, excuse me, just curiosity is That's not an answer to a question. 
it, there is all there is always an underlying need. So this is exactly why. This no, is exactly why. But that's why, why we, we have this. to discuss this. We okay, have you to can dis discuss it. You kicked the can down the road for four years, and that's why the town can't even fix a sewer plant. We can't do a lot of things. You kick the can down the road. Have more discussions about it. Talk it to death. All right. This you know, is devolving. We, we have uh, uh, yeah. somebody from the, the from the okay, resident like here to speak to us. Here. So anyway, let's move along. Thank you for coming in. Um, so March eighth at six fifteen. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Uh, hi, Mike. Mike, say your name and Mike your address. Mike 112 Sunderland Road. Okay. My wife and kids. Thank you for your time. I've been trying to bring to your board's attention the issue with some of the boards and departments in town. In my experiences, some boards and departments make it almost impossible to use their services or receive guidance to be a good citizen in the Deerfield community. Trying to get help from some boards and departments is complicated, contradictory, and unnecessarily stressful. Some members of this board do not even recognize people who attend their meetings. In past select board meetings and annual town meetings, it has been stated people do not come because they feel intimidated. I think we've heard enough of that tonight. <laughs> to clarify on this issue, I am not speaking about the police department highway department, town clerk's office, or town assessor's office, which I have had many pleasant and productive interactions with. And please note, I have not dealt with all of our town's boards and departments. Mm -hmm. I would appreciate it if these issues would be put on the agenda. As Wendy would say, in the spirit of let's work together, this should be put on the agenda and be publicized so that citizens do feel comfortable coming to participate and speak. What, just, uh, what were you hoping to have on the agenda again? I just missed that part. I just wanted to. Uh, some of the problems we're having in town with particular boards. OK. Go ahead. Let us know. Floor, floor is open. I will put it together. I had oh. asked to be put on the agenda, and I was denied by Wendy. Uh, so I was told yesterday, and then given the guidance again today by the chief of police to just come and say this so i would love I to be put you to the meeting you invited me to the meeting to public speak correct so i would like to be put on the agenda and i'd gladly share all of it with but you you're here well, now why don't you tell us what you'd like to speak about what would i like to speak about i'll email it to you kip is well, that fair no, i mean i'm a stay-at-home dad i have a bunch of it on paper at home and that's about all i was able to put together in less than 24 hours okay it uh yeah. Well, if you want to take time and, and come back next week, feel free to do that. Can I come on the 8th? Of course. Could I be on the agenda? Well, well you can. I don't. Oh, oh, wait a second. I'm, I'm chair of the board, and, sure. and, and it is our policy that any, you know, anybody that wants anything on the agenda, it's, it's the chair's choice to have something on the agenda or not. But it has always been my policy that anybody that wants to put anything on the agenda can be on the agenda. And also, if there's any issues and people really feel imp it's important to have be on the agenda, then I would be listening to them and then I would put them on the agenda. So don't blame Wendy for not allowing you on the agenda. It's just that we don't know what you're what the issue is and and when you're on our agenda we we have a lot to do in a very short period of time and so the idea is to have an idea of what your issue is and if it's something that we can address that doesn't have to happen on the agenda then we want to try to do that and that if if it is something that is like a that shouldn't be that should is a legitimate le agenda item that should be addressed and we vote on it or have all three of us because the problem is we 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 can't you know talk about anything uh, and and deliberate about anything because of the open meeting law so if it's something that all three of us need to vote on or have discussion with each other about with you then it's important to have on the agenda I don't think it's necessarily just me I think it should be something put on the agenda and publicized for the whole community to see I don't feel I'm the only one well, having these issues. Uh, well, it, Mike, though, to, I mean, to be fair, you're saying, you know, politely, 
and I'm saying that you are being polite. I'm, don't say that I'm not being polite the, 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 about this, but you know, you're asking us to discuss our uh, employees, and that in in a public setting without our employees being here. That's and, why I think it should be put on the agenda and allow them to come. Let well, them participate. But you'd have to you'd have then, to name the people, and then they'd have to be representative, okay. and then also by their lawyer. I'll, I'll put together an email and send it into you guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. then, and the other thing I would like would be just if if you were going to have, you know, so my part in this job is just to do some you know research behind the scenes, and I do a lot of reading before before the meeting. So if you have specific issues or, or questions, then. Um, then I can do a little homework, you know, in the week before and just say, okay, this is kind of what he's thinking about and let me kind of brush up on it. Because I'm a lot new to some of this stuff and it takes me a little longer to kind of catch up to speed on some of the regulations or bylaws or that kind of thing. I just try to prepare myself for a meeting and just to be able to take in the information. Completely understandable. Okay. Yep. So anything you want to send me, I'm happy thank to listen. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Um, is there anybody else before we go from public comment? Okay, thank you very much. Um, Board of Health comments. Um, please, if you, need a, if you hadn't had a flu shot, please get a flu shot or think about it. Lisa is here on Wednesdays. Um, it will significantly re uh, reduce the impact on, uh, especially on children. The, the flu season is going to go at least till May or June this year. And, the deaths um, are, are yeah. stacking up, unfortunately. Really. Um, and again, uh, we explained this last week, but I'll just mention again that the flu virus is, has, is a virus that has the ability to mutate. So when they talk about the effectiveness of the flu shot, when they say 17%, that means 17% of the people will, it will protect and, and they will not get the flu. The rest of you will get sick, but you'll be significantly less. Um, Debbie Caccino up in the Board of Health meeting I just had with her on Monday. She had the flu the week before. She had gotten her flu shot. This is the first time in 35 years she had flu. She was down for two days only. It was real mild, but it was definitely the flu. She had it. Um, she went to the doctors and had it um, tested. So it it is important to get that flu shot and wash your hands. I had a whole bunch of show and tell stuff, but I left him unfortunately in Wendy's office and not worth getting. But when 2005, when we had the bird flu circulating, I don't know if people remember that, but we had our little um, emergency dispensing site steering committee. We did all kinds of research. And the one thing that really worked was um, elderberry extract. And it was Sambacol was owned by, it's an Israeli company that has been bought out um, by American company now. And, it, and you can get all their stuff now in Walmart. When we had the H1N1, it was one of the few things that really worked besides Tamiflu. So, and what you do is you, you, you have cough drops with zinc in it, you have cough syrup for kids, you have all kinds of products now. You can get them at Walmart, mm -hmm. C CVS, any of those places. And it, it is a herbal thing way back to the Native Americans, but you have to, it has to be a little bit proactive because it is an herbal thing. So, you know, you take a lozenger once a day. And then if you feel you're like sick last night, I didn't go to the finance committee meeting because I was trying, well, I think I was catching the cold that my husband had. And um, I took a couple of the lozenges and went to bed early and I'm, I'm fine today. And that's the kind of thing that you just, you know, you, it's really worth I mean, I really worry about everybody being sick. So mm -hmm. just wash your hands, get some sleep, and if you're driving by Walmart or CVS, get that, yeah, Sambagus or Sambacol, whatever. Okay, sorry. Um, Town Administrator's Report. Oh, okay. Um, I've handed out a few additional things tonight. One of the things I made a copy of was, um, and we should have our management letter from the auditor soon, but I have the management letter from the audit of the regional school district. Um, yeah, just I wanted to that. point out uh, that the GASB requirement is on is the third item in that. That's it. It's not a big deal, but just saying this is what we're also anticipating in our audit, paying attention to the GASB. So thank you um, both the, well, select board for uh, 
uh, moving us forward on that. It won't be something we will see in our management letter in the future. Um, yeah. So things I wanted to talk about. Um, as you know, the RFP is out now for the Parcel C at the former Oxford Pickle site. Um, we will have, I think I put this in your packet, which is the schedule. Uh, the next event looks like this. Mm -hmm. The next event in that timetable is there will be a briefing meeting on March 1st here, which would allow us to talk to anybody who's interested and go over to the site. Um, under the bid requirements, there's a deadline of March 5th to um, submit any questions. And um, if there are any changes to the RFP, um, any of that would be in the form of what's called an addenda or addendum, and that would be sent um, by March 7th to anybody who's requested a proposal. I also like to, you know, as you know, it was sent. We had a, we have a company that has expressed interest. They've received a copy of this. I've also forwarded the RFP to Mass Development and um, one other development agency that the state has that's been involved with um, local community development projects. So, any questions about? Just ask nope. me if you have anything. Um, I attended the personnel board meeting. They sent an email um, mm -hmm. to you letting them, yep. letting you know they were supporting, which we will talk about later as we get to the budget, the planner community development position. Yes. Um, and I have the whole packet in your packet um, with the job description, proposed job description, which they accepted, the rating and grade level, and um, its budget proposal about that, too. Um, do we, do we need to vote on this be to forward this to the finance committee, or do we? What do you want us to do? Um, I, I mean, think the budget is is the issue. We did. I think we talked. About, did we talk about this last time? I'm trying to remember. I I, I had three meetings Monday night, night. Um, and um, let's see. Well, I think just the budget budget piece, okay. and you know, right. they okay. always ask they all many more questions. Sure. That we are as prepared as we can to answer. So. Um, I'd be happy to share whatever information they ask about that. I have found consistently support for this position everywhere. I have too. Um, yep. And it didn't come from me. <laughs> so, I mean, I support it as well, <laughs> right, right. but it, I didn't initiate this. No, nope. so, I think it's been um, good. Uh, so I was here Monday night. Personnel board um, was here. The Historical Commission was here. And the Bylaws Review Committee also was here, but unfortunately I didn't have a uh, quorum. They have a bit of a problem with that, um, and um, I have done some asking around. I think I might have a candidate. I'm going to be hearing from somebody yes. that someone else said, you know, was asking, mm -hmm. looking for people. Okay. Because we'd really like to move things forward, well, including um, possibly um, a bylaw change to allow. Right. Clickers. Yeah. So. Um, when Bruce comes back, will we have a bylaw quorum? Yes. Uh, yeah, he will, he'll be back in time for that, I okay. think. Um, but Dick is also on that. I need to check in with him about that. Mm -hmm. He was not, not at the meeting the other night. Um, also, as you know, I talked about this a uh, few meetings ago, right after I got back. I sent out the uh, request for responses to engineers for the uh, wastewater sewer, mm -hmm. and that's out there. Thank um, you. When is that due? I think I, I can, did I, do you have that in your packet? I made copies uh, of that. Mm, I don't think Let's so. Let's see. I didn't. I didn't remember seeing it, but okay. that, um, that might have left. I was okay. I have a lot a of things in here. Maybe I just made it for myself. Coordinated to here. To. Just, I don't see it. Okay. I don't think. All right. I did make a copy, and if you get into a big discussion that doesn't involve me. I'll go get it. So. Oh no, um, that's all right. I just was okay. wondering the time. It is um, a date in March, and I've heard from one, and I I got another request to send it to somebody. So. Oh, so you did actually get a response. I got a response from um, Stantec. Okay. They're interested in submitting a response. It's not right. a, a response, oh, oh, but oh, we'll okay. more from them. I just asked people to let me know. The same people that responded, I got in touch with. That's right. Okay. Yep, I remember that so, name. Um, Okay. Um, okay. Um, as I said, I was at the fin Finance Committee meeting last night. Um, there are a few things that I'll talk about, but when we get to the budget, I'll, we'll talk about that. And Kip was there, and, and Trevor was there for part of the meeting. And, of course, Jeff was You were there. He was not. Not there. No. Okay. Oh, the no. one he missed. No. You were at CPC earlier this evening. Okay. 
One of the things that came up in the discussion was the town report and how much to spend on the town report. And the discussion about that was we've been, we've been um, really lucky to um, get by with um, the amount of money over the last this year, and we don't even know this year if it's, mm -hmm. we're going to be able to do it with that money, how many reports, because we've worked with staples on printing that. In years past, you, you did other things. So I think there needs to be a discussion about what kind of report you want. Um, do you want to continue? With, and I said I would bring that up at the board meeting. You've had reports like that. You've gone to printing presses. I don't know how we're going to do with a staples report or you know whether... Uh, it will be as costly as going to a printing press, but you've done different versions in the past. This is kind of the lowest common denominator we pour. Um, but if it suffices, it suffices. If the point of it is to have something that is informative, mm -hmm. um, you know, but you can step it up a little bit. At any rate, I even think what we are proposing in this budget of $5,000 is, is maybe what we need simply to do this. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. So, um, are the other two more expensive than that last one? Uh, certainly, I think the bound one was, and um, really, I don't know how that was done. That might have been done on our own printer. Um, that was because we had nobody that year, right? I mean, we've had staff like gaps, but it, even if you look at this, I mean, what's, yeah. it has all the information in it. I mean, I know. we have boxes of it, people don't take them. True, I mean, well, we've been cutting down on the number to cut yeah. the save. The, Sure. Save. Well, if we're not, cost. if people aren't Perhaps taking, you I mean, might want to do something for the anniversary year or something like that. If it, yeah. But you know, I just thought I'd bring it to the board. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you'd like to, you know, return to a, a printing place or continue to. Jeff, did, and again, do you remember I don't remember any conversations on the finance committee about the town report. Well, we only talked about it. He wasn't there. <laughs> he wasn't. Yeah, there. but do you Any remember other? anything? Nothing do you remember else. anything prior? Because, I mean, the idea was we were cutting the numbers down so we didn't have all, we didn't have storage issues, we didn't have spending money we didn't need to spend, and um, we were making them, you know, less, less fancy. I think but, there's sort of a cutoff issue with if you, yeah. if you do a certain amount, it's cost effective to do double that, you know, it's up, yes. sort of up to the printer that yeah. you're working with. So. Right, right. Um, um, we don't at this point have a page count or anything like that, but... Um, Anyway, I simply wanted to inquire of the board okay. what quality of report you I, want I'm okay in terms with the of the last one. I mean, just the last yeah. couple have been. I mean, if it has the information, it's the most economical. And if we haven't gotten any, like you said, maybe for the okay for the anniversary well, I can ask year, Pat we do something to start having a the conversation with keepsake. Staples or others. Um, yeah. I, yeah, is the Staples still open in Greenfield? Yes. Okay, I think that's where she had brought them. I, I don't so know. Too. There's if you if, are you the one that. Does this or is it? Uh, Pat has, Pat has, Pat has worked it, on it I, at least this they last out year to and people now. Like that, uh, Turley Publications over in Palmer, they do a lot of newspapers. Yes, they do. I think like that, that um, we've worked with the, what is it, the prints up in Athol, which is very similar. Mm -hmm. um, that has done a lot, that does Pat, routinely Pat done. Calls around and we, we, we're, yeah. we try to not spend as, I mean, we try to spend as least amount of money. I will ask possible. her to check with Turley. I'm familiar with them as well. So yeah. There's also, um, uh, Place it's down in Florida called Meg Mega Color, and I used to use them quite a bit. They're very reasonable. Hmm. Um, part of it is a quick turnaround time and all of that. But again, I'm writing it down and I'll ask her to look yeah. into these things. If you have information, wow, he was really good. <laughs> also, think about dedication. Think about mm -hmm. yeah. other things, and also get the report done. <laughs> yeah, it's calendar year, so if any. Uh, Town boards are listening, please. Uh, uh, people always confuse this because we think in terms of our fiscal year, but the town reports are calendar year 2017. I'm planning to write a report um, as a town administrator. Um, I'll share that with you before it goes into anything, but um, we can coordinate that. Um, I think that's it. Everything else, again, I'll talk as we get to those items on the agenda. Uh, okay, let's do the two things that we have to vote on. Um, let's do the sewer bill abatement and the two appointments. And the minutes. And the minutes. Um, so let's go back and do Oops. the minutes real quick. Mm -hmm. Oh, do I have, is this what um, you've got that has the highlighted? 
Yeah. The second page. The uh, no, I don't know where Okay, my that's is. the good one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I did drop them there. I, um, yeah, you I did. scanned no, all I this in. I read them. I scanned this in and emailed you all okay. this. No, I, I, I moved to them. approve the minutes of February 8, 2018. Yep. A second. Is there any further discussion? None. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We've got the minutes done. Let's do um, the two appointments. There's uh, two appointments to the Energy Committee, uh, just to the remainder of um, our fiscal year. So make a motion to appoint um, Greg Franchisi and uh, uh, Lori Busada um, to the Energy Committee for the annual term that ends um, June 30th, 2018. Second motion. Um, is there any further discussion? No. Thank you for serving. Uh, the only question is, it's not in particular to these two people, but what role do we play in when we appoint people to other than they're wanting to do this, that they have any background in what they're trying to do or does that not important oh no it is important um usually we have a hard time filling committees so if someone shows an interest i think greg has been involved he was at the last yeah. meeting do you have the uh, letter from the, the energy committee um, yeah i do I, from david okay. uh, yeah gilbert yeah. keith um, yeah but um you and can have people come in and interview them yeah. that's one of the you things you can do whatever you want but uh lori participated or well, she's been very active in energy kind of related stuff but she was also participated in the municipal vulnerability preparedness workshop and she was very um, interested in pursuing those kind of things speaking about municipal, did you know that we had an earthquake yes I saw it. When? didn't feel it but I got notified we've you actually, we've had, actually you we've had four you go through the email email but yeah, we, the, uh, that lady email. Email. Yeah. yeah. Nice yeah. Emergency management yeah. thing. I got an email. We had an earthquake. I didn't read it, but I, heard. I go, darn, I missed it. Southern New Hampshire, right? Yeah. yeah. It was in New Hampshire. Two point seven. But the, we've had um, four of them. I have felt one only once in my life in oh, West Springfield. Them, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, I don't anyway. want to feel another one. <laughs> um, so, no, um, we can do whatever. Uh, you usually stamp these, right? You don't yeah. have to stamp them. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. um, so then, uh, the other item here is the sewer abatement. Um, Actually, this seems to be totally legit. Um, but but you, I didn't know how much we were abating. One of you takes yes. it up I and did looks into it further. So talk yeah, about that a little that. bit. Um, well, why don't what my suggestion is if we look at the past, they're all under three hundred thousand. There were a couple that were close. So why don't we just lower the amount to three hundred thousand? That was my view reading this tonight. Yeah. That I, that was where I was thinking. I'm, 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 I, I agree. Because it's obvious because, they had um, the leak. It, we've gone, you know, it's been close to 300 and then 281, you know, so. Where did I put that? Um, do you want me to, do you want to make a motion? Or um, I just wanted to find it real quick. Oh, here, why don't you have it? Just, you can look here. I know I have it. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Okay, I've got it. I have it. an extra one if you want. I've got it. Okay. Right, so we were going to abate down. Um, to 300,000. Right, which would be abating 273,600 gallons. So okay. We, Whatever, whatever, three hundred works out the math yep. on. On just the last bill. Yep. Well, right. he's only abating this one bill. That's right. Yep. Okay. Isn't an amount? Um, well, the amount I would gather would be two thousand seven hundred thirty-six dollars. Is what we'd be abating. We're we're whatever the you multiply out three hundred gallons. Yep. By ten. By ten. Oh, no. 300, no, 273, 600. Was it not, wasn't it? Yeah, it was we, different. We just well, I changed looked, that. I looked at their bill. You know, I looked at their, uh, okay, no, they, they had 573,000, and it turned out to be $5,736. So the difference would be 273,600. Yep. So it would be 2,700. So 736. So just give me an amount to it. $2,736. Is that the reduction or the amount to be That's paid? the reduction. The amount to abate. Say bill. that again, please. $2,736, which would be 273,600 gallons. We're charging them for 300. Correct. 300,000. Because that's the average of kind of where they're at. Sort, yeah, sort so of his average. total bill will be thirty-one hundred dollars. Correct. Uh, 
So you made that motion, right? I, I, I'll make the motion Kip to abate uh, um, Michael McGrath, six, 69 Main Street, Hatfield, but for the property of 55 uh, North Main Street uh, for the latest billing cycle of 11 1 2017. Um, we're abating $2,736. Due, due to a leak, obviously. Two thousand eight hundred twenty-nine. No, two thousand seven hundred thirty-six. You yep. said right. That's the amount we're abating. And then they have, you know, uh, the other stuff. Okay, the interest. I see. The interest and other stuff. Yep. yep. Makes sense. Did I get a second? Yeah. I'm just writing what you said. Second. <laughs> okay, second. we got a second. Okay, so you went, you did it. By the yep. Okay. Yep. I, I was it's using the number. bottom number and I didn't, I didn't catch side. the interest yep. in the uh, yep. Yep. Okay. demand payment. Yep. I got okay, it. Uh, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Did you exclude the interest in demand payment? Yes. No. Yes. So that's still being it? paid? Yes. That's still being it paid. It needs to be because if it's late, it, that you have to pay that. There's nothing we can do about it. We can't, you don't abate. Well, I, I, I get that, so. All right. Yeah, it's just the amount we're abating. Right. We're, we're agreeing that. Um, to bring it down to 300 usage. Yeah, the 300. Yep. We're, and so that is how much we're abating. Mm-hmm. You, mm -hmm. you uh, <laughs> What? Did I do that right? No, you did. I guess, okay. I guess how, how do we, if he didn't pay this, no, he, sh he should have. If you don't pay it, you're not he, entitled to the abatement. He did pay it, though. Oh, He's he got did? A, yeah, yeah, he did. Oh, he, he did but pay he it. Must There's have a paid check it late, number on top. I see. He yeah, paid he it late. late. Okay. Yep. I see. Two, eight. That's oh, right. Is this a couple days? All right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, so, uh, next item on the agenda is open the warrant. Yeah, so we, you discussed this in basically agreed with this schedule um so if you would officially i want you to need do a, mo that a motion tonight. yeah it says wednesday but it's now mine does maybe right. yours says it's corrected but so i make a motion to open the warrant for 2018 town meeting, town meeting. i'll second the motion is there any further discussion no none hearing none all those in favor aye aye, aye. okay so I will open. send this out to all the boards and committees. We'll put yep. something on the um, yep. website. Also, we you don't need to do this now, but I just think that just we should say that we'll expect to be closing it on March 28th, and that this is the window to submit articles. Yes. Okay. Please don't be late. <laughs> we want them. We want them in on time. Um, well, uh, so we, we have to keep post on schedule. Them, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so now do you want to go back to the economic planner position to talk sure. about the salary and the hours and this packet? Sure. And you should have the um, I, budget um, that goes with that. Yep. Yes. Here, here's the corrected one. All right. I can present it or you can ask me questions. <laughs> we've had this, we've discussed this. Um, I read this all last night. So. Okay. We did have some discussion about the grade level and I had rated it by the rating manual um, and the job duties, you, functions, all of the really, components. Do you really, I mean, I'm not, it's you a, know, it's, this is not a negative thing, but do you honestly feel that this is a 30-hour position? I was thinking more of 20 hours. Or, um. Well, I'm imagining them going to a lot of night meetings. I see them as the professional, you know, person who they're going to ha now have that zoning, the ZBA, the Conservation Commission, and the Planning Board. So I want to allow for that. I want to allow for someone who can go to regional meetings and come back with information about complete streets or you know funding for senior centers or that kind of thing so people in town all that stuff eats up so much time from the day-to-day -day sure. work right we so we can know you know we can keep the conversation open about whether it's going to be 30 hours or 25 or whatever mm -hmm. you know we i we and won't be evolve. able to advertise for this till after town meeting if if it goes through town meeting mm -hmm. so 
I, it's, I just planned it that way to just think. Get, get the ball how, how much, I mean, we've, we've spent extra money a couple times this past year. So how, how much total do we spend at the FERCOG for Pat, like Pat Smith? Well, we, we spend 15000 for her well, contract. And the additional, most of the additional money she gets is through the um, contractors, developers, right. through the revolving fund. So it's not our, our tax money that's going to that. But we do spend. She's done other about things. About fifteen thousand. Yeah, we. That's what the contract is. And so has. actually, if you incorporate this into a, that makes it much more doable because right. that's like half of what we're talking about. The way I viewed this position. Hopefully, you bring is, in money. <laughs> is is not exactly in this way. And I was thinking more along the lines of having somebody work 19 hours and then we could pay them more because not paying benefits is similar to a part-time clerk that we have in her office. Uh, I think for the dollar amount of this position, you're not going to find people. And yet you could find, some, and especially if it's going to be limited to that amount of part-time, where if we did it the other way, where it was 19 hours, you could get somebody who would be doing it part-time for us. They might have a job somewhere else, and we don't pay the benefits, so we could maybe pay them 30 or $32 an hour if you want to call them a, a consultant or whatever. And then if it works out well in the future and they say that they need more time, then we could turn it into a full-time position or a 32-hour position or something like that. I, I think in the beginning, I mean, there's only so much development that's going to go on in this town. And where this all started was uh, my thought with um, of being on the planning board and seeing the confusion that applicants go through when they come to town hall. Right. Yeah. And it, it, it isn't anyone's fault here. It's that everybody gives them their piece of information and points to the other side of the building. Instead and of that's what, guiding them. Right. And if it wasn't for Dick most of the time, handing out, well, you got to do this, then you got to do this, they're lost. And, and right. I've sat here, and I've listened to applicants bring their thing forward, and then have the board say, well, did you do this? And, well, no, they didn't tell me I didn't have right. to, you know. Right. And it just makes it, and then because we meet once a month, something simple takes three, four, five months to get done. And, you know, if they had somebody at, they could deal with right in the beginning and gave them all the right information, it could probably be done right away. And it, it would be easier for our board, too, because it would be, one less thing on our agenda week mm -hmm. after week after week, you know. Well, I mean, I, that's, I mean, actually, that's what Good I was input. thinking of 20 hours. But, but then Wendy brought up that if the 20 hours truly would be eaten up. I mean, we all, sp you know how our time gets eaten up. <laughs> yes. I mean, there's, uh, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have less than 30 hours into a, this, you know, a week. One of the things I could also it's do. It's meetings that go I've done, up your time. I did mm -hmm. some market research, you know, in terms yeah. of what, you know, certainly with the pay um, and what's being paid at regional planning agencies and in the communities that have full-time planners. I could do more research about what, who's out there, what's, you know, as you, we did with the building inspection. Yeah. Health agents, we know there aren't people. I suspect there are, and, and as I said at the personnel board meeting earlier this week, um, um, on the stamp list serve, there are a lot of people who are looking, but they're all they're at far corners of the state, so right. it's not a sharing kind of situation. I also talked about a planner that was hired in the Hilltowns, Southern Hilltowns area, very familiar with, worked there for four years, um, economically depressed, and I met this woman they hired, and I said, oh my goodness, if we could find someone like her, it would be fantastic. Very bright, very charismatic, very, you know, community development oriented, you know, bringing business, being creative about things like that. But one of the things I was thinking I could do before, you know, we make a final decision about hours, that kind of thing, is when we get closer to doing that is once again scope out who might be out there. Are there people who are semi-retired? Are there other communities that would want to share? Um, I mean, even a less, you know, just look at that more closely to see what would, you know, match our needs and I don't think anyone we would hire even at, at 30 hours is going to be twiddling their thumbs. We have a lot of work that needs to get done, taking a look at our zoning bylaws. I know Kyle's doing some of this. I know you're, you've been giving this thought as well, Kip. Change, you know, updating, changing things to make some things more possible to happen in this town. 
um, that we have prohibited or made very difficult, whether it's accessory apartments, that kind of thing, that more communities are doing, especially as the communities age and there is a need for that kind. So I just think someone um, we could learn from somebody who who has been elsewhere as well. Um, the planning board's very interested. Um, I continue to hope they're not looking at this position as someone who's going to sit there to take their minutes, but yeah. we'll realize that this is a professional planning position. Can help with way beyond planning and you mm -hmm. know zoning. It's it's community development, economic right. development. There are things you know I've got a lot, and it'd be great to have someone else help out with those things um, or and make them happen. Bring us forward. Uh, more well, quickly we, and take a, you know dick has left the position of building mm -hmm. commissioner and he was the first point of contact for a lot of things right. and i know that you've taken the lead and and some leadership and initiative on on working on that level mm -hmm. i think it would be good to have a you know professional staff person can who can be welcoming and bring people through the process i'd like to get you know put everything on the website how do you do this how mm -hmm. do you do that just you know streamline yep. permitted yep. permit streamline well, that's that's why Streamlining permit. <laughs> I mean, I was on the same page with Kip that I was thinking like, you know, around a 20 hour a week person, but just the conversation you just had makes it seem like it would be really tough to have well, it get done in 20 hours. But I also hours. like Kip's idea. Be, I mean, I, do, do you think you're going to get anybody? I don't know. This? I said it's. I, I, you I did. did a market I research. did think so. Well, okay. I, I started asking yeah. around. I see that there are a lot of people who want to do this kind of work and there aren't that many jobs. Yeah. And um, so maybe yes, there are we we have we have degree programs right here and people are graduating with with you mm -hmm. know as planners and they get their AICP certification. Okay. So um, we know we have some education and training needs in our boards. Yeah. Um, and I that's a big part of this frankly right. yes. from my perspective. Right. Yes. So um, I think that would well, be useful. But paying. again, as I'm saying, I, mean, I think we paying, can take a look so at it. I can do more some effective. more. I'm sorry? We're already paying money. And so this would be a much more effective way to spend our money, I think. Well, it would I mean, it would be all so encompassing. This is, right. you know, it's limited from the outside. We've gotten wonderful service. And I of course. talked right. at length with Pat Smith about this. Yeah. Um, so she's aware that this conversation's been going on for six months. So what I'm suggesting is that when we get closer to the time, if in fact, it goes through town meeting, um, and you first, um, that um, we can do, I can do another kind of survey to say, okay, we're more likely to find someone at this amount right. of hours because they want to do this. Yeah. Or no, someone's looking for this because their children are, whatever, right. you know, or they not have one person, but just get a either. sense of the market at that point and go from there. 19 hours. Um, we, we can't, uh, that's an, uh, that's, that hourly amount is pegged to people who are often to retirees who are, want to work, and that's the maximum they can work per week through, through a year under the state retirement system. I also that was a system. trigger that if you work more than 19 hours, you also had to pay the benefits to the people. Right, that and that will be a discouraging thing to people, I think, and, and it's sort of, sort of, well, counterproductive. Well, well, we can I, look. You know, they, you know right, we can add that to the mix. They, they could. They could be a person where they get their insurance through their wives or something, and, and they've been doing this for a while. Do you always think might, it would be their husband? But anyway, <laughs> whatever. I guess my point is that if the if the pay was a little higher, uh -huh. uh, but without the benefits, that might attract somebody. If uh, we go with the lower pay and they they um, you know already have the insurance and choose not to take it, then then you know we're kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. so, uh, either way, I don't care. Well, again, um, well, I think you do care. I know what you're saying. <laughs> um, we, it's, it's not a closed loop at this yeah, point. I think we, we keep the conversation it. open and see yep. where it's at, and I'll try to find out so what's what, out there and what the what market do you want is. Do you need a vote to, on the budget uh, um, of the... Well, I would like you, yes, when we get, you can do it now, or we can go th to the budget page and start that process now, but to approve the, the job, the position description as the, you know, recommended by the personnel board and the grade um, did level. Did you all have a chance to look at this? Because I don't want to rush you, but I, I think I it did. makes sense. I did. I did. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah. I, so, as I said, are you, are you, you guys want to vote on it then? Okay. Sure. It's really to pass the um, position in the grade before, level. If Trevor, before you make a motion, are we uh, going to choose uh, a grade and step in our motion or just leave it as a range? 
not a step. Just um, we can we can go back to that. Um, just the grade level, the position the with the grade five. level, grade okay. five. Yeah. All right. So I make a motion to um, accept the pl um, personnel board's recommendation to create um, planning and development director at grade level five um, for the town of Deerfield for fiscal year 19. As, I'll second as, the motion. As set out in, these, in this job description. Um, is there any further discussion? No. No, Hearing but none? I bet you there will be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, good. I'm sure there will be. <laughs> this is quite hefty. Um, okay. It's going to be um, good. All those in favor? Aye. I mean. I, I think it's, we I think have it's to fantastic to get some economic development and some, some drive going in town. And, we, and we, really, I, I we just, really have to. Sounds we like a to. wonderful board. Yeah. You know. yeah. And on that note, we've got the report from the the downtown project and or town center project. Uh, Trevor and I are going to review the draft and have that at the hopefully the next meeting. Yeah, <laughs> I know we keep saying. And that. then <laughs> let the folks who showed up for that, the community people, the business owners, yes. and send that out to them. Yep. And Diana has um, updated a our community our complete streets policy, and we'll bring that forward also, right. which will put us in line to be able to get the kind of funding Sunderland got to do some nice work. Yep. on uh, down, you know, intersection improvements there, but here it could be sidewalks and right. whatever on. Perfect. Go forward on that. Okay. Um, so now let's just um, try to attempt to do a couple budget items. Is, is that okay for you guys? Sure. Okay. One thing before we go, I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm going to have to remove myself from the sewer study committee. And uh, I'm, I'll okay. try to find somebody else to take my place for that. Okay. All right. So, can I, can I? I'm not useful there anymore. So it's I can devote my time toward other things like the school over at Frontier and you know their okay. improvements and stuff. Okay. Uh, um, okay. Well, I was um, when we have the um, consultants from the RFR come in. What I was hoping to do was have it be a select board sewer study committee meeting, but it be. Well, before the I'm still a sewer committee. commissioner, so I'm Correct. involved that way. But right. you know, as far as the committee goes and suggestions, it's you know. I, well, okay. I, except I think, I mean, to we move it forward, I think we all have to be involved, Kip. I mean, I'm not saying. I mean, I understand that you're feeling a bit frustrated, but I, I think we all have to. Well, I'm still we I'll still have, the same yeah. capacity as oh, you guys okay. as a sewer commissioner. Well, but I was hoping I just, that we all three I just of us won't could be involved with that committee. In that anymore. committee, yeah. But then oh. you can take that upper level. Exactly. Uh, oh, okay. To take the vote on the issues. Because what we yes. were hoping to do was move it forward. To, yeah, to have a meetings, joint meetings. Because because okay. uh, it's. We've got to make some decisions, and the only way well, we can we're going to have those is, those yeah, we're going to uh, wait till that firms comes come back. in, and we'll move it from yeah. there, and hopefully have a joint meeting with the sewer committee I'd when love they that. come in. That'd be okay. great. That would so be great. I'll try and, and organize um, that. We'll just have joint meetings from now on because yeah. we, we've got to <laughs> figure the, out what's going on. Does the committee know that that's your intention, or um, I've spoken to most of them. Yeah. Okay. Would you? Um, I think we we need a letters for the town clerk and all of that. So. Sure. Okay. Thanks. All right. Is this from the committee or just the chair? This oh, committee. committee. Okay. Um, so what do you want to take up? I haven't put these in my books yet, but what well, do you want to take you've up? got this. Let's use this chart. Okay. Yes. And we're this one. I Did gave I talk it, with you about I gave this it to earlier. Yeah. I, I, yes. I, I spoke to Wendy about this, and I was just. That in the past, it's always what I've seen is that the school budget was always like 70, 72 percent. That and doesn't have any health insurance in it. It doesn't have health insurance. In it. Okay. Yeah, that's why it's only that's 60 percent. Bogus. <laughs> bogus information. Yep. Fake news. Fake news. Fake news. <laughs> um, All right. The <clears throat> pink highlighted areas are what remains from. Um, um, what you have it, not yet. Reviewed. You know what? I, I, this is updated just today I, from the, what the finance committee did last night. Yep. Can we can we just send this back, like take it out of your book, and and have them pull um, the health benefits and the retirement benefits into the education? 
because this, this well, shouldn't even be what might be at? easier and this is what we're moving forward on is showing the the school employees we're going to do that this year we're going to we're going to vote it that way too well i know but the, uh, I we can change the this. we can change the tariff, but i, I, I think it might be this. easier to do um, school and municipal share of the health insurance on the chart. I'll well, talk to Brenda about it tomorrow. Well, I, I just think it's misinformation and, and it shouldn't be even circulating. I don't know what prompted this to be printed, but I will um, ju maybe just to show that we have the capacity to do that. So, yeah. So, um, you I, want it? I'm not, I'm not, I just want to make, I'm not like, don't want to be crabby at somebody, but, you no. know, it, it just, it doesn't show really what 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 it really is and, and so we shouldn't circulate it when you say the, the health insurance are we talking just the elementary yeah. yes portions of this and um why is that not in there um because it's it shows that it's in it's our an employee of benefits it's in that other oh, it's, it's, 11 yeah. oh so we that's because we were talking we talked about it, so they right. want to just move it into their budget right so okay so just so it kind just, of shifts over and we so, so education is more like that it's it's about one third, two thirds. But so happened? about a two thirds of that slice. But it's it's here. been like this for some time, though, hasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But that's okay. So, the, if you go back to what I originally said, the school budget was always like seventy something percent. No, no. Well, it, it's the high sixties. It's close to seventy. Sometimes I don't think it's actually ever gone over, over seventy. Okay. Maybe. All right. I, I'm, I'm not that sure. Well, okay. it depends. A couple times it would have been very close because you know they've had um, unemployment claims. I mean, so if you well, we you also don't know the budget from the schools yeah. yet. So okay. That's this, right. yeah, it's not. It should say draft. I put draft <clears throat> on as much as things as I thought. Okay. I don't, you know. But I'm going to actually. We need to hand them back because I don't want. I don't know where. I, yeah, I. It's it's not correct information and. Um, I'm going to hang on to my because I'll talk with her tomorrow about it. No, no, no. But, it's, but uh, just on that point, yeah. we are going to vote separately on the school share of health insurance and the town share of health insurance. So, it's a, so it is known right. wh where the. But, but you, but I guess what bothers me too is that, you know, we we don't lay off people, and we don't have. As a, as a municipality, we don't, you know, our share of like unemployment benefits. Whereas over the years, we fund that as we go because we don't, we're stable. And then, and, and some of those years have been tremendous claims, you know, under Mary. Like, um, I mean, we had to argue with them, but it's like we have to pay that. And those things should show up under the education budget because they've it's had some employees. transition. Yeah. I mean, so there's a lot of expenses that don't get picked up, and and that's very I'll talk, important. I'll talk with that, Brenda, yeah, about that tomorrow. Um, I mean, that's one of the things that. And, and know, it's true get, because it it should reflect it because when people vote on that budget, you know, they're not really seeing the true cost of it, and you know, it's, that's that's why I didn't want those. That's incorrect, and we yeah. we shouldn't be having that around because it it looks like we're the ones that are not managing our budget and. You know, we tr we argue all the time on how does it even spend a dollar, and it, I mean mm -hmm. it really. I don't know. Anyway, we just have to be more careful. So, do you want to go down the down the list, Wendy? It hardware. Um. Yeah. Because we um, we pulled that out from contracted services before. Yeah, uh, it had been out before several years ago, and somehow it got all mushed in. in under contracted service, and I just. I've been pressing for this in order is, to pay attention to our our hardware needs and is this and just hardware because five thousand yes. dollars barely gets you. A server. I know, but in this climate with this finance committee, I don't. I, I yeah, and we're starting here. We okay. we had to get to. It's woefully inadequate for what we need. But uh, I don't know what we need. That's I know. the thing, and well, we are going to have a a. Free consult from uh, wonderful. So we'll start here. I just that, okay. But. Sounds good. So so do you want me to make yeah. a motion to pass yeah. the IT um, hardware budget for FY19 at five thousand dollars? I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? Nope. nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So let me just. And then we just we just approved the planner position salary. 
Yeah. Um, we don't need to spend all this, right? But this is just right. a budget. Right. Kind of a right. So do you want so to make a motion to... Um, make a motion to approve the planner position salary at uh, $47,763. That was at that high range. Yeah. No, it was the higher hours. Um, the 30 high hours. It was, it, was, it was only a $30 an hour rate, but it was the 30 hours that makes it higher. What do you think? I think I put in there, friends and I kept working on it. How did I put um, Thirty hours. No, it's it's actually a higher step level two. Yeah. Um, oh, right level five. two. No, it's an just at also just to cover <laughs> us two. in case. So if I thought higher. the thirty dollars was a low range. Thirty dollars an hour was a low range. Let me go get. What did I do with that paper? It's I, all attached in the packet here. Yeah, yeah I know. I thought I was done with it, so it's I put high, it away. I, I know. It's I just. Oh, you know what? Wait a minute. What did I do with it? That? I think it's a happy meet. Well, no, it's not even to step one of grade five. If it was 40, oh, right, 30 hours. I get you. So it's actually. It was more the hours than It's the, more of like a step two or step three of 30 hours. What did I do with that? I just had it. But that looks right to me. I've got it here. So it's more than uh, step three. It's more than it's step more three? It's more than step three. At 30 hours? Just to protect us, um, yeah, I don't. It's another step three. At Thirty Jesus. hours oh, would be okay. forty-one three seventy-one. I see. Um, well, I thought that was that whole idea of having that compensation plan. You start people at the lower grade. Remember so. the discussion at the plan, at the personnel board meeting. They were very um, pretty adamant about we don't want to hire someone and. Um, they were open to that. I said, you've held me to that standard of, of step one to step three, which I did yeah. with this position. But my sense is they understood that for a professional level position like this, they, you know, would, would go higher. We go back to them on this. We go back to them when and if that arose. But this, this would just, just putting give us money the money aside in, in the case. event. Otherwise, we couldn't do anything. Right, we you couldn't get, hire anybody. This is not the final right. um, it just anything. just allows us to have money in yeah. the pot. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. The goal is to advertise at grade uh, step one to three. Gotcha. Um, but instead of having to wait another year or whenever right. to go back to, to town meeting, money. this just, just covers in us. the event. We have a fantastic candidate. We need a little more money to get them. So I make a motion mm -hmm. to approve the planner position salary at $47,763 for FY19. I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? Nope. No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then the planning board, ex uh, the planning board would well, be that, yeah. oh, $1,000. Yeah. That's their usual. Yep. Because they have other, a revolving fund, I think, that funds some of that, so... So I'll make a motion to approve that at $1,000. Oh, wait, wait. The planning had, board had, expense. Um, so this must be an older one because this says 36911. Yes, that's an old position. That's the old one. That's the old okay. position. Okay. Yep. I, uh, I gave you, I gave you two new tonight. I'm Why sorry? Why did we change that to 2000 It w We were going to have the planning position expenses in there for 2000 but we ended up moving that to another line. Uh, the next line down, I think. I thought the planning board only requested a thousand dollars. They right. did. That's for and them. And then below it is the is the expense position for expense. the actual so position that we're creating. If they have, so they're two separate lines. Sons. They are so two separate. So why lines. wouldn't the planning board be changed to a thousand? It, it is. is. Not mine. Uh, On here, Kevin. planning board expenses is. is oh, planning board expenses. Right. Let's see. Oh, I'm be. sorry. Yeah, it should be okay, that one is a thousand, and then the then the then the positions yep. expense is two thousand for probably yeah. like gas and, yep. and whatever. training, training whatever. whatever. Okay, so you made that motion. I'll second it. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then the planning position expenses, which would be any certifications or conference or whatever they're or yeah. gas or whatever that might be for. For them, is that two thousand <coughs> for mm -hmm. FY nineteen? Yep. You want to make that motion? Oh, second I motion. I made the motion. Oh, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'm sorry, I'm not. That's okay. 
Yeah. All right. right. Um, and then we have we town have office expense. The town office expense we have at twenty three thousand right now. Are you sure that that's going to be this. enough? No, I mean, look at this. Well, I'm still working on contracted services. Things keep coming up. You, I um, got to teach you to do it the other way. Instead of, do you think that's enough? <laughs> Why well, is it so much? No. <laughs> I know, no, but contracted services. She always says, you think that's enough? We're yeah, not going to do, we're not people, doing contracted services yet. But. If I didn't know better, I'd say you didn't have children. Because if you're saying, is $5 enough? No, I need 10 okay. No. <laughs> But we always have problems with that. Well, if we run out is the issue. You've got to yeah. wait a year I and mean, you've got to transfer the money. You've got to go to the, the, the finance committee for a transfer. Yeah, but so they don't usually pull your teeth out over it. No, no, no. no but but you don't. have to be legitimate. I mean, you have to anticipate. I, I don't know. Well, I think it is an increase over last year, so. Yeah. I, I $4,300. Yeah. I would, I would. Last year you were under. Eighteen seven. We were under that was for half of the year. You were under staff most of the year, actually. Yeah. This 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 year. And we um, expended nineteen in the year but before. You think just because we have more help, the expenses for the office are going to go up? Well, well, supplies. Each executive assistant has different requests. It's not that much money. Um, Wendy's really tough. We do need on a new uh, whole, a three hole punch. I have. Yeah. <laughs> one in the copier room is broken. I asked her to get another one. <laughs> We've broken all of them. <laughs> can't you Trevor, fix it? I love to use it. It was like, it? I got two holes out of it. You're I'm the like, one that's making here? us right. bump this up. Sorry. See what I mean? $4,300 three hole punch. So, you know, like the, I, the, the, the in doing this, there. I always look, you know, I, as we update <laughs> the expenditures, um, you know, where we're at. This is a January report. I don't know if you have them with you keep them with your budgets. I do. Yes. I can't. It's in there somewhere. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, I was looking at it earlier today. Right in front. But that's why I asked if it's enough because we're, you know. I hope so. <laughs> okay. Well, then let's I think just. We're good. Then, I think we're good. It's, it, what we can do is if it's, ser if it's a serious couple thousand bucks, we can go to the finance committee. Yeah, ask. Ask. Truly I would rather for a do change that. Or something than, like that. Yeah. Then, then overfund it. Overfund it because then. So what are we going to do? Change it to twenty? No, I make a motion at twenty-three thousand. Well, why do you think that's not enough? I think well, twenty-three thousand is plenty. The av average, actual average, is twenty-three thousand three hundred forty-five. That's why I asked if we felt. That's what we spent. The system. average of the last four several, years. Four years. Last four years, what we've spent. So that's why I asked, are we comfortable with this? But. We just I am. That I, I am. Yeah. I, that I don't think we, we need a, more than that. If we have to buy Trevor a couple a more. Three more punches. We can try to figure it out. <laughs> okay. I'll second the motion. All right. If there is there any further discussion? Yeah, we're pretty much on no. target for spending in that account. Yeah. So, but that's um, why I asked if we're averaging that, then do you anticipate I, any other expenditures no. that we aren't ca thinking of? That doesn't include I, painting I've, in here, does it? That's what I... That's another thing. <laughs> what? Is, no, does it include painting the walls in here? No. That's, that are so that's, faded out, baby That blue? would be town office building. That's, that's maintenance. We'll get to that one. <laughs> it's um, amazing how many I people have mentioned volunteers. that to me, and I'm oblivious. I, this I is the nicest oblivious. town hall I've worked in. <laughs> that just it shows can, you where I've been. Be but no, I, I think I like this. Fresh put of paint. Yeah, the only... So, well, so the only the only wild card really is what we're going to pay for town reports this year, because that's in this. And um, well, we, you know what? Then let's just. That's why it's bumped good, up to five thousand okay, for next so year. All those, right. in, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. So we'll watch that. And you have general insurance at sixty-five. We don't know exactly yet, but. Uh, Do you want to Brent hold and I've talked that? about that pretty well, extensively. Um, I've asked, but we've got two new building, two one old and one new building coming on, we're and picking up the possibly reason, other vehicles. So the reason why um, we, we went and we got credits yes, and stuff, for those so we're classes. doing discounts, yeah. and everybody's doing discounts. So, and, but uh, the reason why we have an increase Chuck is because just said we're going to he just put all those backup cameras on the trucks, which gave yeah, us a, gave he us got the grant credits. for that. Plus, it gave us a discount on right. insurance. But um, we're, we're going to be picking up the EMS building. Right. So I feel com more comfortable doing the 65 right now, and then hopefully it will be less. Yeah, we have till 
almost town meeting to adjust it. Let's, okay. I've been pressing them. Well, so I make a motion to approve the general insurance budget at 65000 for FY19. I'll second the motion. But I have to say that s since we had so much money turned back last year, I, 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 I understand why you budget enough to have, but it seems to be more than... And since we always have so much money coming back, I know we get to keep it, but why not do it the other way once in a while? Like, you know, it's not a big deal to go to the Finance Committee and get extra money um, instead of budgeting all that and waiting for it to be recertified and stuff. I mean, because I, I do know that we have a new building, but I can't imagine, given the rates that we pay for, like, our garage is so expensive and that insurance is not bad, I don't think that this policy is going to be more than $1,000. Okay, we but, can you know, adjust it down. Yeah. I mean, do you know I what I'm saying? I just, oh, no, I do. I just, just didn't want... You can put it on hold if you want to. No, I think... I, I, I don't mind doing this. I feel comfortable enough that we've, At the we have been doing so well with our discounts Right. that just doing 61 instead of 65 is fine. I, 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 That's I agree fine with, with me. you because it, should, well, it shouldn't be more than... That's um, right. So We're going to have to insure the building for probably a million and a half or $2 million. Why? Because it's replacement costs, what we would have to replace it, okay? It's not... I, okay. Um, Kip, we went through this, okay? You can't build a building, the town can't build a building without going through the appropriations. Without contract. seven and stacks it, of notebooks. <laughs> and so... Three well, doesn't five. the insurance company <laughs> set that figure for us? What they do is they come in. Yes, they'll tell us how much we have to insure the building. So but I couldn't can't imagine that they would tell us that we could rebuild the building for less than a couple million dollars. Million and a half. Look, we spent eight million dollars on the town garage. Mm -hmm. the EMS. How is much was the insurance on the town garage? I thought it was five million. Mm -hmm. I don't even think I it was five replacement million. Cost? I don't replacement costs. I don't know. It was yeah. replacement costs. Yeah. It's, it has to be, right. it's whatever it is, but yeah. I'm right. sure it's in the millions. So, so do you want to make a motion to uh, uh, revise it to 60, I, I would, 61, I would feel com I, I agree with Kip. I think 61,000 would seem to be enough. Based am, on I the am, fact, I feel comfortable we did enough credits. I amend my motion to uh, $61,000 for FY19 for the general insurance line item. I'll second the motion. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 On the back okay. of this page. Yep, we have uh, Board of Health Expense. Um, I actually um, need to change the, the tick testing. Um, I am still negotiating. Do you want to hold on that then? Um, no, it's, all I want to do is, um, I had put down tick testing for 1500 mm -hmm. Um, but I think I'm going to have to put it down for 2,500 because um, the to do the full panel, the $200 um, dollar panel mm -hmm. that does all the extra um, bacterial, secondary bacterial infections, which we want. Um, so far, I've only gotten it down to um, 55 bucks for the our, our you know people. Right. But we have to pay the 25. So I'm I'm trying to negotiate a different combination, but Okay. I want to be set, be up front that I uh, it might be $2500. So in other words, we as a town would subsidize for $2500 100 tick tests and that would give 100 tests for people to send their tick in and they would get the $200 panel of all the diseases. It's a it's a big printout. I can bring it in if people if you want to have it looked at. I'm just thinking on any given day when I take ticks off, I have eight of them. Do I just randomly go eeny meeny no, no, miny no, no, mo no. which tick do I you know no, I throw no, them all in the toilet and I just Yeah but no uh, these are the ones that actually bite you. It's not it's not loose ticks. We, we you take you, you take a tick that has bitten you, you pull it off, put it in a plastic baggie, and you um, send it down to UMass, and they, and they run the panel on it, and they tell you what is infected. 
So if you so if it has Lyme's disease, you it has it Lyme disease or any but but bosis and whatever all they these other there's stuff. just all kinds of other things now. Um, Charlemont's been doing it, and they've um, their secondary infections. This is why I want to do the full two hundred dollar panel, is because their secondary infections have increased thirty three percent in the three years that they've been doing it. Wow, it, the tick ticks. Um, are so have, the Lyme disease has been fairly so stable the the at about a third of the ticks are infected, which is our rate for Lyme disease from the last time we so did it. So the test comes back positive for these things. Is that so? Then, then you would go get antibiotics. Then you go you, to you, you start take treating the test, right, away. right? You take the test to in your doctors. to your doctors, and you would get antibiotics, and it, it would prove would cover those you, items. That yeah, you, you would you would get treated for whatever it is on the thing. Instead but if it random. comes back clear, then you have saved yourself a visit to the doctors, and you of course you've got a peace of mind because right. you know you didn't have an infected tick. How quickly does that turn around? You know, less than 48 hours. Oh wow, that's um, quick. Yeah, it's 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 pretty amazing, because they just you put them in the mail and they get them and it, and it and it's all done in email. They email you back the results and you can print it out. Okay. I I don't know. It's kind of to me, it's really a big deal. And what I'd like to do under our mosquito district is really make it be a bug district and have some kind of revenue stream with like spraying the perithium on mm -hmm. in people's yards and stuff and then they would take over the tick testing right um or so, we could get another grant like we had originally we had two years of grants mm -hmm. or three years of grants testing but right, so many so people were interested in doing it they didn't want to do it anymore so you are you revising this to 38 846 yes okay so make a motion to uh, approve the Board of Health Expense of 38846 for FY19. Okay. Do you want me to second it? Yeah. Okay, I'll second it. Is there any further discussion? Nope. No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. One opposed. Okay. And the Finance Committee did not approve the $11,000 last night. I they, see that. They passed it. Okay, you see that. Yeah. Yep, that's fine. That's fine. Let's move forward. Then is that then the only thing we have is the FERCOG core assessment, assessment left? Yeah, I also included in your packet their whole handout um, explaining their programs and how they come up the formula for COG. But for that dollar amount, we do get a lot of services. It isn't, that. It isn't that that's just our fee and we pay as we go. I know the planning board pays. Uh, for certain services, but usually those services are um, Sorry, the applicant pays for them. But we do get a certain amount of services. I don't want to oh, say yeah. free because we pay for it, but right. there's a certain amount that the planning board gets to use. And okay. Put, you know, I guess your office would use it as well. Like I, I mean, I we find them a wonderful resource. There, sure. yeah. um, uh, we do pay. Oh, yeah. They have to survive. We do pay for their services. We use them for the RFP. Well, let's just say, do we even pay extra for that? Though, did we? We, uh, we will, but it will be not much. Yes, that's not a free service. But I will call her with a question, um, and that doesn't. You know, well, those I was just going to say things. there are they are a resource, constant resource. I mean, I I feel like we get. Yeah, and they advocate on behalf of. Rural, they do. small towns, all yeah. you know, in Boston, I mean, and I yeah, it's in there. It's in the yeah. handout. Um, yeah, all the different items. I, I participate on a lot of these committees, like the REPC and the EADS and the SEEDS. DLTA and, that doesn't cost yeah, us anything. Right. We get a, a real benefit out of yep. that. Yeah, um, the trainings. Um, so and and we're they've already this is set. We don't, this isn't going to change, so we can vote this now. This is what they okay. approved. We, and right. Carolyn actually was there, I believe. Yeah, yep. um, I voted this budget. So um, it a, actually was a pretty stable budget. So I make a motion to approve the FERCOG core assessment for FY19 at uh, forty-four thousand one hundred ninety-five dollars. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, um, wait a minute. Let's see where is that. It really should be the two things together now. Um, hmm? It's not just the core assessment. I'm, I'll talk to Brenda about that. It's, it includes the statutory 
If you look at the, the detail, budget detail. There's a statutory for 2804 regional services assessment at 40. Oh, so combined, right? Yeah, that's combined. That's the regional services yeah, assessment so and the statutory it's, it's, assessment. I want to change the language. I'm going to talk to her about that. Okay. So for the FERCOG assessment, um, just call it the assessment. We won't. We don't have to say Instead core. Of core. Okay. Whatever. We've got it. We know. We know what, what it doing. is. Yep. Okay. Um, and that's it for now. From what we have. Oh. Let's see. You did the rest, I guess. You did the rest of what we know. Yep. Um, yep. So one, I thought there was one $1 thing you needed to do. Smith Vocational Tuition. I guess that was just for the fun. Um, okay. we're, hold, we're holding off. Um, well, we didn't do the Dickerson. Did we do the Dickerson's Trust, Library Trust? You can do that. Um, I think uh, I think you did. Oh, did we? Okay. Is it? Um, yeah, everything that's not in pink you've done, or you will see that we don't have anything for it yet. And we just got the schools. Um, we just got the reg regional school, correct? We don't have the elementary school yet. Um, the, uh, they did send the elementary. Last year's right. appropriations for the uh, South County EMS, does this amount reflect how we reduced it, or is this what we budgeted last year? Um, what number are you looking at? Oh, that was the, no that was the number when we, um, our actual assessment. Right, so um, we adjusted it down. We used... Um, our retained so, earnings. Retained earnings. So, right. but, so do you know what that number, what we actually paid? Because did we go, was it a straight 25% or 20% or whatever it was? Uh, I guess I don't understand. You mean what our okay. percentage is? No. This is a dollar amount that we appropriated last year. Correct? Yes. Okay. We ended up not paying because we reduced that. No, no, no. That's the reduced amount. Well, I that's think. what I asked. So I don't. Well, how could it be reduced? We just reduced it this past summer. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, no, we reduced it last year for this budget. That's why. Um, okay. If you, I, oh, I, all right. Um, I have. If, if that's if that's if if you remember it that way, I'm fine with that. I just. No, I thought we the, had reduced it no, from that's that. The actual, that's, that's the actual the, amount after yeah. we reduced it. Okay, yeah. I'm fine with that. Um, <laughs> let's see where I might have last year's stuff. Assessment was three fourteen three oh six before. So that was the same as FY seventeen. Um, FY seventeen was three eighty seven nine nine zero. This no, is before. Not that's not what this says, but um, that was before the assessment yeah, adjustment. Yeah, three fourteen three oh two. There's a five dollar difference between last year's this before. Right now is what we're being assessed is three fourteen three oh two. But that is we have not put any retained earnings on it. That's why um, 
Here. I'll just, I'll just right, 07 expend, it was 314.07. And then. This is the total budget. Yep. Okay, from last year. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then this is our share. This is prior to and that's the retained earnings. Okay, and this and is this year's. And so this, this is this year's potential share, but yep. we've had no retained earnings. Okay. okay. All right. And then this is the year before. With no retainer. That's FY sixteen. So yeah. that that's seventeen. Right. This and so where's what was eighteen? Eighteen is was uh, right. two. Um, was that's two, what we actually two, ended up. That's paying. what that's what right. I asked. Right. I, I that's wanted what to know we if ended up. That's what we ended up after. Yep. Okay. After we, right. we applied yep. retainer, we just haven't we haven't decided how we're going to apply our Thursday. Yeah, Thursday we have Next to decide Thursday. how how we're going to fund the building. Mm -hmm. You know, furbishing the building, whether you know we use retained earnings or we whatever. I mean, there's like three or four choices. We'll just yep. go over them. Motion to adjourn, or do we have other items? Um, I'm fine. Oh, Next Next no, meeting. actually, actually, there is one more item. Um, oh. I went to that meeting. Um, uh, how to manage spontaneous volunteers. So, um, actually, what I did is just pick in up in an emergency. In an emergency, if it's not just any spontaneous <laughs> volunteers. <laughs> so, yeah, just like, show up when you're having a disaster. So, so what and they I did. Help. I'm just curious. It's have we huge. had this problem? Yeah. It is a well, problem. It is no, a problem. Like, I said, have we had this problem? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Really? Actually, it is a problem. I've never, like when, when that boy went missing, and everyone shows up. They want to help. I've when never, that boy went missing oh, it's a huge in, problem. in Conway yep. over to you know a few years ago, yep. like everybody showed up and wanted to go in the happens, woods, and they had to manage the them. What happens is you're taking real responders away from their responding to, right, manage, to manage the people. people. Thing. And so the idea is this: this is We're just, just an overview of this is an overview yeah. of volunteers and liability. This is affiliated volunteer organizations, a list of them that you can ask for help. And then here is the management um, registration. Re it's how to open a reception center. And this is all the paperwork that goes with it, forms to fill out and everything. But actually it's wonderful because what you do is you take some of our volunteers that we've been training that are like our EDS volunteers, and then you assign them at the reception center. And it's wonderful because then you can actually find out what people's skills, if people are showing up with a chainsaw, and what you do is you sign like a firefighter with, you know, the mm -hmm. chainsaw guy, and they go out together. You never, you know, I mean, you use the buddy system and all right. that, but you sign them work, and that way you manage them, and you actually get stuff done instead of being just chaos. And you'd set it up, say, say the EOC is here, then you'd set up the reception center somewhere like the elementary school. Mm -hmm. Or if the EOC is in the fire station, then you could set up the reception center here. And you okay. just process people. But it's very interesting. It was very helpful. Good. Um, and I, the, other, the only other thing, um, I at, um, had a meeting on Monday about the... Um, Drill the drill the mm -hmm. vigilant guard. guard the national guard drill on November fifth through the eighth. They are definitely having um, the river Deerfield River out here on the eighth and ninth, so they'll come out here. And um, the scenario right now is just starting the planning, but the scenario right now is that um, Harriman Dam or Sherman Dam, they haven't decided which one, is going to have a mechanical failure. And then they're going to give us a 24-hour um, notice that the dam is, is breaching and it's going to let go. And um, they're not going to do the Connecticut, but I'm hoping, obviously hoping out of this whole thing that we'll point out that it, the license, FERC transferred the mm -hmm. license in May, and we still have no emergency action plan from them. So. Carol, what's, what are the, what's the name of that exercise and what are the dates? Vigilant Guard. Uh, it's Vigilant Guard. And it's um, November 5th through the 8th. And and um, 5th, 6th, and 7th is going to be out on the Cape. And then, um, you know, they're going to do ocean, you know, uh, those communities. When like, are they going to um, be here? The situate. Fifth? But they will be here the 8th and the 9th. Okay. And the, the drill is going to be um, raising water in the Deerfield River. Um, well, it will be, be like a 50- or 60-foot 
wall of water coming down. It will be like double of Irene. So we'll not have not really. Not really. This is, this a is test. drilling. Drill. This is drill. <laughs> this is if there was a dam, um, not um, river just flooding. a water release. This, so is this is a dam this training, failure. They're going to tell us what we should do. No, no, we participate. They're going to help us figure to cope with it. And and what um, they're going to do is the procedure, the protocol is 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 to have when you have mechanical issues, they're supposed to notify us. The dam people right. are supposed to notify us. And then what they're going to do is notify us that there's a mechanical failure, and then notify us that that the, tw the within 24 hours the the dam is going to fail. So uh, we it's have either to the evacuate Sherman or the, the areas. We'll have to practice evacuation. We're going to have. Um, all kinds of issues with, um, you know, roads, the town being cut off. Um, it, uh, Irene, when Irene came through, it was like around 30 feet. They're estimating between 50 and 60 feet of water. So it will be significantly worse. So our sewer treatment plant would be inundated. So we'd have to try to lock down the sewer if treatment plant. If it was plant. that much bigger, so wouldn't most of old Deerfield. So are we going to evacuate that, that end of town? We're going to do that. Well, you're not well, going to really do it. That's, we're going to find out what you. No, I, I, what I mean, I know how to I'm do it. Go. I'm just saying, so you're not really going to ask these people no, to leave. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. This is a drill. So we is, is would it a practice top top or an ex, a, a more no, no, active a, drill? It's okay. an active drill. Okay. But what I'm going to do is go to Homeland Security um, in the next month or two and ask them for evaluators for us about fifteen or twenty thousand dollars to actually have professional evaluators to evaluate what we're doing so that we get a good after action report because the drill will only be evaluating the National Guard response to our requests. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'm also going to ask if we can do a tabletop uh, like a week or two before so we can practice like what is our evacuation protocol, what is all this stuff is happening. Um, one of the things that's kind of interesting, they're going to bring in a drone and um, the drone will be able to go over our roads, and that, uh, it's a special drone that um, estimates uh, like the amount of fill you need and all kinds of stuff. So our highway department is going to practice with that. And as a result, if we actually have anything that happens, we can request that drone, and it can shoot through. And then if we have all our FEMA information preloaded on our computers, we can download that stuff right from the drone, right down into the computers, and then file all our stuff with FEMA, like, immediately. It's, like, so exciting. I can't believe it. It really is. It's By the great. way, we're getting that $200 from, whatever, four or five years ago they owed us. So I just got an email about that. Can well, make, good. I Every make, dollar counts. I want to make yeah. two quick announcements, uh, if anyone's still awake. Um, <laughs> Deerfield Recreation Baseball uh, registration is starting February. Uh, uh, dates will be February 16th, uh, Friday, February 16th, and Monday, March uh, 12th, uh, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. at here at the town uh, town hall. Um, and then their Frontier Girls Softball League registration is February 16th, which would be Friday, um, from 5 to 6, and March 12th. Again, five to six. Um, these are for grades um, two, three, four, five, and six. So please sign up. Um, I didn't mean to put this off. I just didn't have a chance to read this. This is a D D A R um, apiary program. I I think we want to participate, but I didn't even have a chance to look at it. Uh, so. I haven't seen it. So oh, okay. Then don't worry about it. Have I'll you talked sure. to Carrie about whether we should apply for a culvert grant or? Um, oh, I'm going to. Um, I left a message with her. She okay. was out of the office today, and um, uh, I'm going to find out what our options are on that. So, okay. I'm, I'll make sure that we get in it. It's just I'm not sure if I want to spend our MVP grant to have Chris do it if Carrie will let us right. just do it. We can do it right. I mean, we can do it ourselves for cheap. I mean. We'll just ha get some estimates from Kevin, and then so you can submit the month. I'll start working on weekends again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. It's yeah, it's, it's not that complicated. I know. I know. And and so it doesn't seem. I don't want to spend. I would rather spend money on. I have a the more letter from Ken. Yeah, I, I'd rather spend a um, more uh, our money on more complicated something, whatever it is, you know. 
something that we can't do because mm -hmm. we have a lot of information on that culvert already. So, one of the things that's holding me back, um, not holding me back, but another thing I'm looking at in terms of contracted services is um, uh, there's the Meta grant. Uh, the town got this three years ago, twelve thousand five hundred dollars for, which was intended to be spent on Beth Greenblatt for a landfill solar. Oh yeah, yeah. The town got the grant, asked for an extension, and then lost it because nobody pursued that. And I'd like to apply for that again. They're coming up, but I'm looking at either that or for her services to move the landfill solar project forward or hiring someone to look at what's happened with the solar installation at the small treatment plant that hasn't been working well. That's fine. We need I an expert for that. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, I think there's a limit for what we can put in for so we can't do both, and we really need to address both of those things. So the solar system at the sewage treatment plant belongs to the town of Deerfield, but it's not functioning? It's It's not doing the reporting that it's supposed to be doing, which is an important part of it because there was green, green Communities grant money, but I don't, I don't know enough. I, I believe if we don't have the reporting, we're not really sure how much it's actually doing Isn't what it's supposed to it? do. Um, be a meter on it. Well, we should be seeing something reflected in our, our bills also, and I, I don't know if it's working at full capacity. So it's a complicated system and we need expertise for that. There, it was it a was, kind of a messy project. It was it was a problematic from day one. Yeah, it was a messy project. So you know, a lot of money was put into it. I think town money went in as well as green communities money. So uh, not very much, but it doesn't matter. It still should work, and it always was. I don't know. There were, it just seemed there was so much confusion. There were many I know perspectives Dick, on what happened. Yeah. So um, well, Dick spent yeah. a lot of time trying to get it straight. By the way, and I think I forward to you the email from um, Deb Dacious about the train moving. Oh, train it did move? It moved. Oh, good. <laughs> Stay <Wow>. tuned. <laughs> no, they can move us. again. They can keep moving. So. Let's All right, move. Trevor. You're Motion on. to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Time is oh, it's in favor. Oh, my goodness. Hi. Hi. What happened? Okay. Yes. Uh, I, oh I think that was unanimous. It's too late to have dinner now, isn't it? Um, here, go can wake you just give that guy. to Wendy? Better go wake up the guy in the booth. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I already have this. Oh, you have that? You can oh, just yeah. keep it. I, I, um.